All right, we should be live now. Are we live? We should be okay. live. Okay. Hello, everyone. And welcome to our first live stream on my channel. So there will be technical issues. <laughs> yep. There will be problems. There's going to be some. But that's fine. <laughs> going to be some of those. Let me see. Yeah. But we got Felix here. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we're also, we're live streaming on mine, but we're also live streaming on his Twitch channel as well, which is Final Boss Felix. Yeah. Uh, which we do do some live stream stuff on as well, which is just mostly playing games and swearing a lot, which there will be swears in this one too. I cannot censor myself. I don't have a duck with me at all times. <laughs> I just so... need like a big duck button, just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a rich. I made a money. So um, anyway, uh, we wow. wanted to, we wanted to set this up to kind of answer your guys' questions for the uh, Fool's Gold module. And um, I'm also going to be drawing at the same time, which is going to be really hard. <laughs> I could already tell. I like move. started. I like, yeah, well, I was just like, okay, well, I'm just going to have something of a sketch of like uh, of a character and then I can just ink at least. So I don't have to think too hard, but it's still just like I'm, I'm still just like moving my picture around and not touching it as I talk because I'm just like, oh, God, I have to <laughs> talk. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Felix more more or less is going to be reading the chat. I don't I don't um, see the chat right now. Yeah, I've I'm got just... the chat open on my screen, so I'll be doing the uh, the uh, the answering to your questioning, um, yes. which uh, holy moly, that chat is going by fast. I'm going to have to read so I... fast. <laughs> well, isn't there a slowdown function? Maybe. Let me see if I can find something here. I um, know on Twitch there is. There should be one for YouTube as well. But if there isn't, then it's like, what YouTube, get on it. What the hell are you doing? So. Yeah. Uh, okay, hang on. I've got... There we go. We've got chat pulled out, so it's a bit easier to read. Um... It's just like, everybody shut you, up! No, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how slow I can really make it. We have currently almost a thousand people watching. There's 880 people. Wow, hello, everyone. There's a lot of very, very nice people here. Oh my god. This is a lot more than I thought it would be. <laughs> I told you! <laughs> I told you! I was like, you need to slow down the chat. And you're like, nah, it'll be fine. And I'm like, no, bruh. It, it's good, it's good. Bruh. <laughs> Uh, but hey, to, you know what? I don't even know how to slow it down. So, um, whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll just go by the, the, we'll just go by whatever and, and try to figure it out. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's, you know what? This is a nice problem to have. Seeing this many people here just, just screaming love at me aggressively in the chat. Just like... <laughs> Aggressive love! Yeah, like, oh, that's like the best thing ever. Like, all caps, like, ah, oh, you guys. Seriously, oh, yeah. you're the best. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. um... First question, what is it? <laughs> what, I don't know, what is the first one? I'm just gonna try to pick one out. Um, I'll do my very best. Um, holy crap. Oh, you know what? If I just start scrolling, it kind of pauses the chat. So, let's just okay. scroll to a random one. Oh, there's so much love. Like, dude, there is so much love in the chat. Aww. 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 Thank you for the love. Yeah, thank you all. Okay, let's let's just go to a random scrolling spot. Let's see what we've got. Um. Oh, yeah, maybe we should just say that, like, just to be safe, it's like, we have a Kickstarter going on. <laughs> oh. Well, maybe and... we should mention that. Yeah, and that, like, the reason we're doing this Q&A is because we want to answer questions from, like, because we're doing a module for Fool's Gold, and uh, people have been asking a lot of questions. And I, I do want to make it very clear, any questions that are just, like, what's in this um, box set, and, like, what is shipping times, and, like, what does, uh, what is gothy's mask feel like like please ask that to the kickstarter stuff because it's like we don't have all the answers for that stuff we just know the content that's going to be in the in the book more than anything but when it comes to the nitty-gritty kind of like kickstarter stuff uh i don't know i don't know at all <laughs> no, <laughs> i'm like... just i just draw and <laughs> tell <Yeah>. stories so <laughs> <laughs> i hope to god that yeah we can 
<laughs> at least answer this stuff. Yeah, like if so, you have any technical <laughs> questions, that can go right into yeah, the... Yeah, uh, that's like think, the word, technical. So yeah. there, there is a... Um, on the Kickstarter page, there is like a support, um, not support, well, like the comments, basically. You can oh, go the in there and ask them everything and check what other people have asked that um, may already, um, you know, answer any technical questions you might have. And there is also the Hit Point Press uh, Discord server, which should be listed somewhere in there uh, on the Kickstarter page, where you can also just chat with them and ask you questions and see what other people have asked. And yeah, hopefully that'll clear uh, most things up. but. You know, yeah, overall, stuff. we've got a good month to go, and we're hoping to get all the final stuff into people's hands by September of next year. Um, you know, unless we get another fucking boat in the canal. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know, it's revving up to go. It's just like, eh, eh. <laughs> it's gonna come, it's gonna happen. Yeah, and I mean, uh, there's so much. There's so many like shortages of everything. Like I just saw the thing on Twitter being like, "We're running out of the color blue," and it's like for paint because they're missing out on stuff. Anyway, <laughs> but I'm just saying this shit is tough. So <laughs> hopefully we'll have it on time. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Also, anyway. um, we should we should have a little. So thank you, and also congrats, I guess, to ourselves that we that you guys demolished that stretch goal today. Holy Congrats crap. ourselves. I don't know. Congratulate <laughs> ourselves. Like, it, it's like no! selfish. <laughs> no, it's all you guys. It's all you guys. Yeah, it's, it's all you guys. Uh, true. Like, I didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> uh, but, okay. All right. Questions. Let me try to get a question. I'll scroll to a random spot again. Let's see if I can find one. Um, okay. Let's see. Bingo. Uh, actually, you know, I should pre-read this stuff before I actually read it out loud because I love That's you true. guys. But there's going to be someone sneaking in there. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be somebody sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so here's a question. This is from Julius, and it says, Hi, Dingo. Has Felix ever deployed something super bullcrap against the Fool's Gold team? And then as a DM, how do you mitigate the bullcrap from your players for a fun time? I guess we'll do the first part of that first. Have I ever thrown bullshit at you in a session? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like you just kind of roll with it, right? You roll with the punches. You have fun with it. Really, that's the best answer to that. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to do some uh, questions for the module, too. Yeah, for sure. Let me um try to find some of those. But yes, he has. He's, he threw yes. a Baylor at us, and then it summoned another fucking Baylor. So... <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, come on! <laughs> uh, okay, here's a good question. Uh, this would also be a good one to go straight to the headphone press team, but will the PDF be sold after the Kickstarter, where you can pay with PayPal because I can't pledge without a credit card? Uh, I believe the answer to that should be yes. Um, yeah. I can't oh. vouch necessarily for PayPal. Okay. However, what I can say, everything... Well, most things that are in the Kickstarter will be available for purchase after the actual campaign. Unless it says uh, Kickstarter exclusive, but yeah. also like these things aren't going to hit the store until like, like we're still in Kickstarter. Like this is still being kickstarted. Yeah. So like the things you see, it's just like, well, we still got to make them, <laughs> you know, it's like we still got to make these things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, p some people have this idea that like, because we're kickstarting it, it's like, oh, so almost done? It's like, no, no, no. We're still in concept phases for things, you know? We still have to make things. So mm -hmm. um, they'll have their own timeline and time frame, but we're, you know, it'll all be really good. And, like, the stuff we've already seen is, like, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for the dice. Oh, there's the a lot of good like stuff. Like, I mean, all the art we've put up, it's just, like, a tiny little teaser of really the full beauty it's, of it all. Uh, the beauty yeah um okay here we here we got a question um uh, hi dingo and felix love your stuff by the way this is from john everett i was wondering how does the alchemy system that you guys made work mm. well, i can talk a bit about it so obviously i can't give you like i'm not going to give you the full rule set but basically it is a um it's a system that's 
supposed to be more close to what's like real chemistry or alchemy at least. So what you actually do is there's a bunch of different ingredients with unique effects that you can combine. Let me say it that way. And depending on how many and which ingredients you put together, basically can make for some really dynamic potions. I think that crazy shit. Yeah, crazy shit. And I think that's kind of like a good summary without, you know, giving away the entire rules. But uh, can you, you know, can you actually make like a million plus potions? Uh, yes, you can. I did the math multiple times just to make sure. And yeah, you can actually make like I think it was 1.8 million distinct potions in this book. So if you love alchemy, this is for you. Because I yeah. love alchemy. I also made him do the math like three times in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, no way. Yeah, like, no, no way. way. That's bullshit. <laughs> That's bullshit. And he's like, no, 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 let me show you. And he did it like several times. And I was like, okay, do it again. Let's <laughs> see. Like, I don't trust that at all. So I don't <laughs> trust math. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I remember that, but I, yeah, I did the math. And um, also, when I say like potions, I mean different formats too. Because you know, in Alchemy D&D, you've got oils, you've got salves, powders. That's all part of the alchemy system. So honestly, it's, um, it's baller. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, you, if you love alchemy, you're going to love that. I promise, more than a million combinations. Swear to God. I swear, I swear to God. <laughs> uh, so if the real fool's gold is in 3.5, how did you swap to 5e? This is a question from Ravenhack. Um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, I suppose. Pain. Lots of pain. <laughs> Lots of pain, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Luckily, a lot of the um, uh, 5e stuff compared to 3.5 is fairly simple so um sorry simplified so i think just this is my opinion going from 5e to 3.5 would be harder because 3.5 is a lot more specific and nitty-gritty so going to 5e was really just a matter of making sure it's balanced you know 3.5 loves its high numbers <laughs> so just making sure it's balanced according to what people expect from 5e because i mean I, I love going crazy with shit you know that um but yeah, I made sure it's it's just fairly balanced. There's still some crazy stuff in there, but really that this is content that can be used in other um, other settings. Like you can you, you can play the stuff in any game, and it's not gonna break it. And you can you like use bits and pieces, you know. Yeah, we were hoping to make sure that it was very um, uh, exchangeable. Like you could exchange it to, to any module. You yeah, wanted. exactly. You know what I just realized is this stream is like deafeningly silent except our talking. Why don't I put on a bit of Fool's Gold OST music in the background? But with our two songs? Yeah. Loop them over, <laughs> over, and, over, and, and, over and over and over again. But oh, I'll, no. here, I'll tone it down. Hang on, it's going to be a bit loud. Give me a second. There we go. Mm hmm. It's coming gonna happen i'll just put it quietly in the background over and over and over again okay we'll make sure that that doesn't happen no 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 <laughs> no 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 i am gonna torture these people <laughs> no i'm in <laughs> but okay <laughs> no 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 there is going to be <laughs> uh all right next question let's see what you guys got um okay there's a question for you dingo uh, Cloud Bear is asking, what is Sneeze? What is his species? Is he part of a species? <laughs> uh, okay. He... So I'm just going to deflect that a bit. <laughs> and um, say that you will be able to have a Sneeze in the module. Uh, but when it comes to his race, you're just going to have to figure that one out. Have to you have to figure it out because he sneezes. That's what he is. Sneeze. 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 Yeah. So uh, for now, there will be answers eventually about sneeze, but that is for later. So mm -hmm. yeah, uh, which I am excited for people to have a sneeze, which uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I think that'll be amazing, adorable. So cute. Well, Sneed's just amazing. But also, uh, I do want to say that in the back of the module, we are going to be providing the character sheets. Yes. Uh, of the Fool's Gold crew. So, it, it's, it's more just like, it's because I've just been asked, like, by... A lot of people all the time of being like, "Can I have their character sheet? Can I have their can I have their stats?" And I'm just like, "Okay, well, this is the easiest way. So we're just gonna like give you guys the sheets in the back. With a, you don't have to play them, but some people have just wanted to insert them into their games, which I think is cool. So I'm just like, yeah, okay, this is probably just like okay, I can I can um, uh, kill p two birds on one, with one stone kind of thing." So uh, they're going to have their own, like, custom sheets, and it's going to look pretty sick. And uh, you guys are going to get all their stats, and um, I think we're just going to start them all off as, like, I don't know what level, probably 10? Um, probably around, well, a lot of the content is, like, level 10 plus. Not all of it, yeah. but some, a good, like, part of it. So likely the characters will have character sheets that are balanced around, like, a mainstream kind of adventure. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to, yeah, I... I don't know if we mentioned it. This we is mentioned terrible. it. Uh, we about how like yeah, this this module is going to be mostly ten to twenty. That's we wanted a higher level module because we don't see that very often. Yeah, and that's to say like that's the adventure. So yeah, the, that's bo true. the book itself is actually for all levels. So if you're a new player and you're just like, hey, I want to start at level one and I want to go all the way up to level twenty. You can absolutely do that all within Fool's Gold. Um, yep. But we noticed there's like a lot of these books and content out there. It's like, um, well, it's, it's like low level stuff. It's like, okay, have like a party of a, you know, five level fours and here's your adventure. It's like, well, let's cater to some of the, um, the people that have like, you know, they want higher level adventure stuff, right? So it's definitely part of this book because I'm passionate well about that. Yeah, and we also just, like, it just naturally happens with 3.5, because we've also chosen to beef up some things. Oh, definitely. Because <laughs> we were just, like, the one thing I found with, like, 5e, go like, 3.5 going into 5e is just, like, it kind of felt like they toned down a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, so we were just, like, uh-uh, let's, let's try to beef it up a bit for ourselves and for other people. It doesn't mean you have to play it that way, but it's, like... Mm -hmm. We just, we chose to be like, well, we want to do something that's a little bit beefier and more challenging. Um, especially since that's that's Felix's style. Well, that's kind of all of our styles that we do. But we like to essentially just like, well, throw a Tarask at you at level six. So, <laughs> and just kind of hope and pray you deal with it. But also just like, <laughs> there's other ways to deal with it other than just hitting it a bunch. Um. Which is yeah. Felix's style of, of combat. So you'll be finding that a lot when it comes to his monsters and, mm -hmm. and uh, adventures. Just like, yeah, this um, this creature is, uh, you know, so powerful, but, you know, just splash water on it. And bam! <laughs> you know, or something like that. But uh, I, I don't, that's not actually an example, but, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying it, it can happen, especially with you. So, <laughs> like, so yeah. Oh, All right. Man. Next question. You know, I was I was gonna mention something, and then I forgot what I was gonna mention while you were talking about it. It's like, uh, damn. Was it was about was uh, it balancing content, leveling. Um. It, oh yeah. Okay. Now I remember. What I was gonna say. So, a big question we get all the time. This is, I saw it in chat, but also in general, is people wondering, you know is the fool's gold book is it just like so is this like a retelling of just like the fool's gold adventure you see on youtube you know or is it something different and um so basically for what i wanted to say for that is the book itself is actually huge like we're talking two three hundred pages very likely and when it's all said and done and yeah. it's you get the entire bellowing wilds what um dingo features in her videos is just like a snippet of it so there's a lot more towns, there's more classes, races, monsters that may not even sh show up in the videos just because that's not what the players encountered at the time. But there is a entire expansive world, like there's god lore, creation lore, um, politics, 
economics, you know, like there's lots of legends and myths and random quests. So there is tons and tons and tons of extra content that will never, well, some of which will never be seen on the YouTube channel. That being said, everything that is in the YouTube channel is in the book. So you can actually go and replay the Fool's Goal adventure if that's what you want. Like, like beat by beat, that's what you want to experience. The same monsters, the same levels. You can do that. Absolutely. But if you want to go in there and say, well, you know, I don't just want to spoil the YouTube series for myself and, you know, do that again. Uh, then you can also just have an entirely different adventure in an entirely different region of the Bellowing Wilds and still have just as much, if not more fun. Yeah, we essentially gave you all the pieces, but you're the one who gets to make the puzzle. And also there's extra pieces there that we didn't have or we just never explored. Like... You know, there's several towns that he had, pu you'd put in, and we just never went to. Because we were just like, eh. <laughs> it's just like, we have other shit to deal with. <laughs> you don't got time to go to this town just because we didn't, you know? It's, it's like whenever you play any sort of campaign, like, well, what we do is we create a map, um, usually at the beginning, and we... As the DM, you just kind of go, eh, there's a town there, there's a town there, there's a, eh, maybe. And then if we ever get to it, then you start to make it and go, oh, okay, yeah, there's a thing here. And then you kind of try to tie it into the main plot or something like that. Yeah. But um, there were some regions and stuff that we just, we didn't go to. Um, and uh, so we just, um, it wasn't explored. And mm -hmm. you won't see it in the series because it's like, well, we just, we didn't go there. Um, but you guys will be able to yourselves mm -hmm. and make your own stories, which will be really cool. And to be honest, I'm just like, ah, oh, dang, I want to play through it again. Not exactly like the same story. I don't want the same story. I already, I already lived through that shit. But uh, <laughs> I would like to explore the Bellowing Wilds as a different character because there's so much more shit that I'm like, ah. Oh, that's so cool. I want that. I want to. I want to. You know, like you've had uh, like races and classes that I'm like, dang, I want that. I want to play that. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm excited for you guys. I think, I think you guys are going to like it. Absolutely. Um, and if you don't, you can homebrew the shit out of it. Like <laughs> there's so much stuff you can do. D and D is beautiful like that. Oh, totally. I mean, like, and, and if I put any like systems in there, for example, the alchemy system, it's made to be like expanded and homebrewed by you or your GM, like yeah. mess with it, have fun with it. Like the book nothing is just sacred. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing sacred. Nothing here. is sacred. <laughs> nothing is sacred here. <laughs> uh, so I uh, got another question here. This okay. one is from Shadow Reaper Fifty. Tell us about converting Arena's Gonzo Magical Girl class to Five E. And the answer to that mm. is no. <laughs> so, um, okay, let me let me say answer that properly. So. There is a magical girl class in this book. And if you want to play, you know, what Irina played, you're going to get a fully, like, rebalanced 5e version of that class. Um, however, uh, I just want to mention that everything that's in the book is made um, to contribute something new to D&D. So, you know, you can actually play a good portion of Arena if you want to just go play, like, a college Bard of Glamour. Sorry, Bard College of Glamour. But I'm actually going to add some new abilities that haven't been seen before and make a proper fleshed out class, Magical Girl class for Arena. It's going to be baller. It's going to be absolutely awesome. And you get to live your full weeb life. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. But um, I'm, of course, not going to spoil anything about that at the moment. So It's in there. You can have tons of fun with it. Gotta wait for it to come out officially, though. Yep. I'm gonna be good. <laughs> Someone said baller like the steel balls. Good pun. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Proud of it. Uh. I didn't catch that at all, but that's because I choose to not catch it. Uh. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. All right, let's see what else we've got. Let me scroll through here. By the way, I mean, there's... God, there's like 1,300 people. I'm sorry if we don't get to your question, but I promise we're gonna do our best. We might even do another Q&A later. Like, I was thinking of doing one, uh, like, the week before 
do Kickstarters done? Yeah, maybe we'll do one like every week or so even. Who knows? Like if there's oh, this much in, if there's this much interest, <laughs> I'm down to answer questions. Absolutely. <laughs> or just hang out and chill with people. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a question here. I've seen this pop up a lot in the in the chat. Um, but it's uh so it's from this specifically it's from the dude X and says, Hey Felix Dingle, love your stuff. Can you please Dingle. tell us about the sheep? Why are they so bad? By the way, Felix, you're the best DM. Wish I had one like you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> awesome. um, can we tell you about the sheep? What can we tell them about the sheep? We posted the art for them. Yeah, I mean, I know we keep getting me uh, messages about it, but I'm sorry, you're going to have to get the book right now. You will find out about it in the series, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you guys do know that. That, that, that will happen, but right now... <laughs> Right now in the series is not the time to talk about that time. Okay? Like What now is not the time? Really? You sure? It's a little heavy right now and I'm kind of <laughs> just like okay, I cuz the thing is that when you write a story or um when you rewrite a campaign cuz essentially what I'm doing is like I'm rewriting it because it's like we did our campaign and it's all done. I played it from 2016 to 2018. And it's done. And so I can compile it all and make it into something that's actually like tangible and you guys can understand it all the way through. Because campaigns are very convoluted when you aren't playing it, right? Mm -hmm. So there is momentum when you are telling a story. Uh, like you have to understand that you can't just stop in the middle and then be like, well, and now let's talk about X, Y, and Z, which has nothing to do with the main plot. Like it just kind of takes away. So... Uh, I have, ever since I mentioned the sheep, I've been trying to figure out when can I put it in. Because I want to talk about it. I will talk about it. It's funny as fuck. But, um, I just have never found a spot for it. Because it doesn't tie into the main momentum of the story. So, it will eventually. I will get to it. But my god, not right now. <laughs> 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 it will come up though you guys will get it uh just like with sneeze and everything like you guys will get all your uh questions answered uh and like sips his mom and stuff but that just it takes time there's there's telling a story it, it takes time so yeah um but unfortunately right. yeah but unfortunately in this q a i'm not gonna reveal <laughs> how and what the sheep did to us and what happened and man we're just gonna keep hyping it up until eventually i'll post it and be like man so much disappointment and i'll be like yeah it's because this joke went on for way too long <laughs> 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 oh. but it's fine i i enjoyed that uh that session or whatever but um i i think you guys will too but it doesn't matter anyway like I said, you guys will just have to either, you know, you'll get the book and you'll read it and you can kind of like make up in your mind about what you think happened. But the actual Fool's Gold story, I'll have to tell. Like, you guys could read the description of the sheep and go, oh, yeah, yeah, I can understand why we <laughs> had to die. <laughs> but um, uh, when it comes to the actual like lore of, of our encounter with the sheep. Uh, I will be the one who will be telling that yeah. in that the video. That specific one. <laughs> that specific one. But I am very much looking forward to other people making their own sheep stories. I want to hear about and those stories. Yeah. I want to hear about those ones because those ones will be fucking hilarious. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, next question. Sure. So um, you've got a few smaller ones we can get through. Um. Uh, this one is from Jay Duenas. Good evening, Felix and Dingo. Is there anything in the module where you can run into the Fool's Gold crew? So, I would say the answer to that is technically yes, because it depends on what your DM puts you through. The character yeah. sheets are in the book, um, so if they want to like put Gothi in to run a store, they can do that. Yep. So, yeah, we essentially, like, we made the pieces. And um, we've also included a lot of, like, items from the crew. So, you guys might be able to do stuff with that. Um, we're just kind of, like, we're letting you guys be able to play in the sandbox any way you want. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to, you totally can interact, and that's that's pretty cool. Um, actually, that's, 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 like, 
crazy in my mind. Yeah, right? Other people playing it, it, it still blows my mind. Yeah, well, it's just like, it was so funny when I was thinking about, like, yeah, they can have the character sheets, and I was just like, wait. Oh, God. If you have to, if you play Sips, like, why would you want to hurt? <laughs> why would you want pain uh, <laughs> like that? And just like, well, and also because he just, like, he has so much wild magic and, and shit. It's just like, it's... It's gonna go bad. You know it's gonna go bad. Oh, you know it. But I, but I mean, I, I, the, re I mean, the reason I played it, him, was because I knew it was gonna go bad. <laughs> That's why I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, which I know some other people might do. So um, maybe not yeah. their DMs. But <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, will you be able to buy the pins and die separately? Yes. Also, will we have our own jawbone? Yes. By the way, love your videos. They got me into D&D and always make my day. That's from KempoKid101. Thanks for that. Uh, is the campaign still going on? No, it is not. That one's done. Um, Super done. Uh, actually, actually, it was done like before episode two. So episode one, it was still going. And then by episode two, it was done. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another more technical question of, will the STLs include the new minis that got unlocked and the Tarask? Yes, it will. Yep. Um, will you work? How will you work Zanu into the module? Will he affect a PC like Sips? Zanu is in the book, but again, totally depends on how your GM wants to work him into the story. If you want to, you know, copy the way it happened Fool's Gold, they can do that. If they prefer to do an entire new story, they can do that. Yeah, because you have written in the modules just like how he works and and what what um, you can you give suggestions on how you can how you can integrate them or properly or something mm -hmm. like that. Absolutely. But um, yeah, it's it's gonna be it'll be in there. But um, at the end of the day, you guys have full control. Yeah, which is that's very important to me. It's that fool's gold is supposed to be a bit of an open sandbox adventure with lots of little stories in it. And it's still a bit of like a direction, but you can do what you want to do in this jungle. You know, you can go absolute hog wild. And that's very important to me that that's always preserved. Um, all right, so here's another question. Um, tell us about the virtual tabletop assets, maps, tokens. Will the book tell us which areas to use or which, sorry, will the book tell us which music tracks to use for which areas? Uh, yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> um, there will be, in parts of the adventure, there will be um, sound cues, or at least something like it, which the tracks are pretty self-explanatory about what they all do and, you know, how they are. Uh, sorry, like, what they sound like. So even if you don't go by the music cues, you'll know when to use which track. Um, otherwise, for the virtual tabletop assets, I don't have, like, you know, a full list of them, but, you know, you're going to have your tokens for your monsters and your characters. There is going to be maps you can use, um, so all the bases will be covered for that. Yep. Um, let's see what else we've got. Sorry, again, so many questions. I, You, you guys are overwhelming in the nicest possible way. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad I'm not the one who's <laughs> reading through that shit. <laughs> Because I'm yeah. just really bad at reading, so. <laughs> bad um, reader. Um, okay, and by the way, I'm, I'm kind of prefer like preferring questions that are like, you know, specific to like, you know, the Kickstarter and Fool's Gold. I know there's lots of love and asking, you know, about like Dingo's process and how she draws and voice acting and such. And we'll definitely get to those questions sometime, but right now I'll focus a bit on Fool's Gold. Yeah, mostly just when the the um, Kickstarter is going on. Because I mean, if we want to do another live Q and A some other time, because we have lots yeah. of stuff. Yeah, for all sure. The time. We can, um, man, we can do one like e like after an episode's out. That'll oh, totally. Yeah. So here's another question, which kind of lines up with something I was planning to do today, and that's uh, reveal some content. Um, mm. So G John the DM and also many other people were um, asking. Hey, Dingo and Felix, I was wondering, what are some of your other character options? Love you guys. Thank you. We love you too. Um, character options. Why don't we reveal one of them? Like, well, not all the, you know, all the stats, but something about them. You want to sure. do... Do you have one in mind? Or otherwise, I was thinking maybe the Chironan? Uh, that one? Sure. Go for it. Yeah, you want to do that cool one? one? Yeah. Okay. Because that one's just like, it's just a funny... It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I think that I think you guys should know that like this book I 
I don't think I've ever really seen a module that's like this. Other than maybe some people were saying like Rick and Morty or something. Uh, just because of humor. But like our stuff is funny. <laughs> like we're trying yeah. to be funny anyway. So uh, there's always going to be a little bit of flavor of comedy throughout the entire book. Flavor. So a <laughs> little bit of flavor. So every uh, so a lot of like, you know, character options stuff have a little bit of humor to them. Which yeah. I enjoy. Um, yeah, because, like, I work with a bunch of editors on the book trying to, um... Make my hot garbage readable. And, um... <laughs> something they were saying is that they feel that this book is pretty comparable to something like an Eberron setting. But with the humor of something like Rick and Morty. So, there's... It's definitely a good time to read through it. But, well, it's not raunchy like Rick and Morty. No, it's not raunchy. Um, it's not raunchy. The humor is lighthearted. And, it's, you know, it's not just like everything is dumb and like haha and stupid. No, that, it's not it. There's sincere, it's our humor. awesome lore in there and legends and those sorts of things. But then within that, every once in a while, there will be humor as well. So it's a good time to read it and to play it. Uh, but getting sidetracked because we wanted to reveal a class. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, let's do the Chironin then, right? Let's do that one? Yeah, go for it. Cool. You can pull okay. it up for yourself, and then you can see how much you want to reveal. How much I want to reveal, huh? <laughs> sure. I will pull it up. But, or maybe, you know what? I won't. I should be able to do this by memory. So. <laughs> Once you get stuck, and you're like, wait! Yeah. We'll see, you know, we'll see. Call I'm calling myself out, if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about the Chironin. That is a new subclass that I made for the monk. And it is actually the class of Abby from the series. Yeah, yeah. Abby, wait. Okay. Oh no, I was going to be like, I'll pull up a picture. And then I was like, wait, you guys pretty much know Abby yeah. is. It's fine. No, they know it's Abby fine. Is. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a subclass for monk. And it is basically focused around the concept of if you're a chiropractor, and then you went out to adventure and kill monsters. This is how you put your skills to use. <laughs> so it's a mix of like um, a bit of a support um, subclass, but also an attacker one. So uh, it's, it's got a lot of buffs and debuffs you can apply to both your allies and monsters. But it's also got um, a little array of more uh, aggressive abilities. So there's actually a, um, I mean, you've got your, your basic stuff, right? You can heal a little bit, you can support your allies and those sorts of things. But there's actually a mechanic in the Chironin class that is all around dislocating limbs. So you can actually, if you play a Chironin, you can go in, you can, like, for example, dislocate somebody's arm if you succeed, you know, your ability checks and whatnot, and you can just disable that limb from combat for that time. Um, which, I mean, I, I should, I could reveal the ultimate ability, right? You have to, it's so funny. Yeah, I have to? Okay, okay, okay. You have to, I, I would just like, I'm waiting for it. I'm like, <laughs> please talk about okay, it. Okay, fine. So, there's the dislocation. And of course, you can undo dislocation, that's the other specialty of the class. However, we got the ultimate ability of the Chironan, if you're getting into the higher levels of the subclass. There's an ability called Rip and Tear. And what that ability does is you can go up to someone, you can first dislocate their limb, and then you can rip it off and turn it into an improvised weapon and proceed to beat them with it. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, you all didn't know Abby was a little badass. <laughs> oh, Abby can do some mad damage. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so... If you want, you can go rip somebody's arm off, beat them to death with it. Or, if you feel like they've learned their lesson, you can actually go and reattach the arm to them using uh, that same ability. Oh, like a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> you just, like, beat, beat that shit out of them with their own arm. And you're like, well, I think you learned your lesson. And then you just reattach it like a madman. You can rip off someone's arm, slap them with their own hand, and then reattach the arm. See, this is the shit I wish we had at the time. You just I didn't think... know about it. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. We just didn't know about it. But, like, um, that's true. Because as soon as we saw Abby, it was like, oh. Um, 
But the, then I'm again, I'm being called out by so many Doom fans right now in chat. I'm happy about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I'm happy about that. Doom is great. Yeah, you have to you have to play the song when you play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do the <laughs> ultimate should have queued ability. up the Doom music for the reveal of the class. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Limb privileges revoked. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need a timeout. Timeout. That leg is be <laughs> That leg yeah. is mine for the next ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's saying that brings a whole new meaning to why are you hitting yourself? Stop hitting yourself! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. It's so good. You know, we, I just remember when we talked about that and, and like <laughs> making that, and that was so good. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, that is a reveal of the Chironan, which is a subclass for Monk. Um, yeah. One of many. <laughs> uh. Yeah. I think you guys will like a lot of the the cool subclasses and stuff we've created and um definitely um there's, yeah, there's a lot fun. of really good ones um but now we'll let's do another question before we reveal any more prompt and unprompted <laughs> yes uh, yeah we have okay. to keep a little bit under a hat yeah uh okay quick question on the kickstarter from crystal thunderheart i love your name if you get the 120 dollars to rask thing do you also get the 80 dollars box set um or is it one or the other so that is one or the other but what you can do is if you want the box set for example you can choose that tier and then you can after you make your pledge you can go into add-ons and you can choose the to rask mini separately there so you can get both. You just have to kind of go through like, okay, one tier and then the other one's going to be an add-on. But very do. I'm having trouble with the sword. I think I'm gonna yeah, I can on. tell. You're just going over and over I on know, that sword. I know, and I'm just driving myself insane and probably over everybody else. So I'm just going <clears> to... <throat> I'm going to move on. And yeah, yeah, uh, I'm yeah. going to do... I'm <laughs> going to do... Cutting off the perspective. <laughs> just going to... Yeah, yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm just gonna move on oh. to, to this instead. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, so I'm just kind of vetting a few of these questions. Um, let's see. Sure. Okay. So here's a question from Alden Starks. Uh, what are you going to work on after Fool's Gold? And can you take the mouth off with Rip and Tear? Uh, so I'll quickly answer the mechanical question of no, you can't rip the mouth off. Uh, it is based on joints. Like, you know, chiropractors. So you can rip someone's head off. There's actually a specific mechanic for decapitating someone with it. Um, but it has to be a joint. And there's no joints in your mouth. So you can't do that one. So, but I guess while I'm saying that, you could dislocate someone's jaw. So Yeah, but you could rip it off, I don't think. Man, so are we going to get into those intricacies? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's up to your DM. It's up to your <laughs> DM. Uh, but the rules address it. So, um, you know, it's, it's not body parts, it's it's um, joints that the class is focused around. Yeah. As for the other question, what are you going to do after Fool's Gold? I mean, lots of things. Lots take, of things. Take a vacation. <laughs> take a brief break. Yeah. Is that is that towards me or is that like towards you? No. I mean, I can I guess I can talk a bit about mine because that's I'm not really yeah. secretive about it. Well, you know what? We can kind of talk. This is like life facts. Both I guess. sides. Both sides. Yeah. So I'll talk about mine, um, which is actually that after Fool's Gold is done, and by that I mean this Kickstarter and like writing the book, um, I would like to make another one because I'm really enjoying this work. And if you guys all like it so much, um, based on the Kickstarter you guys do, um, I'd love to make more of these. But uh, there's also another passion of mine I want to pursue. Uh, which is actually video game development. D&D um, is a bit of a tease for that for me because you're still, you know, doing game development. It's just not video game development. But that's ultimately uh, my goal is to get into that industry. I'm going to have my own game studio and start working on some video games. Um, don't know exactly which genre yet, but, you know, think of your games like Valheim or Divinity Original Sin or like Doom. Like, that's kind of... The kind of games I really dig. Um, also Zelda. I love Zelda and Witcher. Oh, so good. Anyways, getting off track. It'll be something like that. And hey, some of this Kickstarter money, I'm hoping to actually set aside to get into that. So, thank you for that. <laughs> but 
But Tinga, what about you? What are you going to do after the... I guess for you it would be, what are you doing after the Fool's Gold animated series is done? Yeah, so I still have a good amount to go. Uh, I know some people are just like, oh, are you finishing it? You know, like, so soon? Because it, it does kind of feel like it's, it's wrapping up, but no, no, no. You have you have a good roller coaster ride to go. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. um, We've got a but, lot more content in general coming from both of us. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. So after Fool's Gold, uh, I want to actually like I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I'm not entirely sure what's gonna happen right after, because sometimes like things just reveal themselves when they needs to, like. Like, doors might open when I need it. But, essentially, my goal in life is to enter television. Um, writing and creating stories for television. Um, that's why I've kind of, like, formatted Fool's Gold the way it is. Because I'm experimenting. I've never properly told a story before, uh, front to back. So this is my first attempt. And my first attempt at, like, thinking of how television would work. Obviously, I don't have the uh abilities to make it like show quality because i just i don't have 50 animators and You're one woman <laughs> i am one woman damn it and like oh it sucks because it's like there's a lot of times when i'm like oh man i'd love to draw this angle for this shot but i know it's gonna take me all day because i don't know how to do this angle <laughs> and i attempt it and, but if it takes me longer than an hour i have to just kind of be like okay this is the best it can be, and I gotta move on. Because every time I do an episode, I have to get done a minute a day. So that's my goal, and it's like, well, I have to reach that in order to keep it flowing. Because I can't just be a perfectionist. I have to actually keep going and making things, or else you guys wait even longer than you already wait. So, uh, this is, like I said, this is my test run on how to do television for just, like, a tiny version, like, baby, baby step. And so after this, I'm hoping to put together some pilots uh, and start pitching the studios. Uh, maybe I'll do my own damn studio. I don't know. <laughs> Blackjack and hookers. But um, <laughs> I shall see what happens. Uh, I know most of the stories I will be telling are based off of D&D campaigns because I've just found that it's a much better um, storytelling medium for me because it's a it's a giant writing room. And you get feedback instantly if something works or if it doesn't. And you can also, like, I don't know. I, I feel a lot more connected with the characters when I've, you know, played through it. Um, but that's just me. Anyway, hmm. so that's that's my goal in life is to, you know, Netflix or, or um, Hulu or Amazon. I don't know. Some streaming service. I don't think I would go for TV TV because that's a lot. That's a lot. Well, it's, it comes with a lot. It yeah. just it comes with a lot of restrictions and a lot of yeah. Don't don't even get me started on the industry. Anyway, so uh, that's that's my goal. Yeah. My goal. Yeah. Okay, I got one question here. I wanted to answer from Leonardo Martino, and I'm sorry that I haven't gotten to it yet because apparently it's 3 a.m. where they live. But hi, Dango and Felix. Big fan from Italy here. Woo! Love Italy. No. I was wondering if you have any pro any uh, project about the localization of the module. If so, are you hiring? Um, so for the uh, localization, we don't have any concrete plans yet. Um, that being said, I mean, some of you might know I am from Germany. I am, you know, born and raised German. So it's something I want to look into, but it's nothing I can promise right now, and it's nothing that is uh, currently concretely planned for it. So. English, of course, yes, for sure. Uh, any other languages, um, it's a sincere maybe. Yeah, we just have to research and figure out, like, because we also need to determine costs and, like, time, um, too, on that, just to getting it to you guys, so we mm -hmm. have to figure that out. So, there's yeah. a lot of factors. We've, we've realized there's a lot of factors when it comes to this stuff. Um, so, uh, not just, like, the localization, but the entire book. Just like, oh, I didn't know we had to do that like certain other things but it's just like learning learning it's a big learning process it is yeah it is uh all right let me scour for another question here real quick um god thank you guys for all the love there's like 
I can't begin to explain, Dingo, because I know you, you can't see the chat, but no. it's just spammed with love and good intentions. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, so, that's thank very, you guys. That's very sweet, and that, to be honest, it really does help me. Uh, I know it's always just like people just being like, oh, you got, your love means so much to me, and it's just like, no, no, no. It actually like helps me keep going. Because there's a lot of self-doubt when it comes to this stuff. But uh, you guys always manage to, like, perk me up when I'm just like, man, I should toss the towel. And then I get slapped in the face with a bunch of love. And it's like, oh, right, you guys actually want to know what happens. Okay, cool, let's go. <laughs> 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 yeah, artist problems. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, there's so many good questions. Um, How about this one? What's that? Sorry? Just start with one. Yeah, exactly. This one is from Black Belt Gamer ninety eight. Uh, for both of you, I'll ask this: What led to this all being done as a full tilt Kickstarter in collaboration with Hitpoint Press? You're spoiling your fans with all the goodies you have on there. Uh, can we I tell guess. Tell the story. Hmm. Can we tell the story? I mean, we can tell parts of it. Like, okay. uh, well, I mean, okay. Hitpoint Press is your main sponsor. I think we can say that, right? Yeah, I love their stuff, so I was just like, they they just instantly became like a good uh, a good partnership in that of just being like, yeah, I love their stuff. I love talking about their stuff, and they always just like they love um, making things that are just really cool. So I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Um, oh uh, shoot, I just lost a question. Uh, how it how it came to be. Yeah, so I was also looking at the next one already, but yeah, oh. how it came to be. I like how he looks okay. sunburned with the first stroke of that. <laughs> I know, I know. It's because he's pink. <laughs> My pink boy. Um, well, I, do you want me to tell the story or not? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so we were at PAX Unplugged uh, in 2019 or so, and uh, Hit Point Press was there, and we hung out with them, and... and we went to like a dinner and uh, with a bunch of other creators with them. And I remember I like offhandedly suggested like, you know, I'd love to do something like, you know, maybe make some cards for Fool's Gold or something. Or, you know, maybe, maybe like do a module or something. And then like, I just remember uh, uh, Rico, uh, the CEO of um, Hit Point, and just like turned to me and he's like, you... And Felix, lunch tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> uh, okay. And then we just like, we sat down, we talked, we had lunch, and we like, we just kind of figured out what we wanted and um, what we wanted to, to give to you guys. And that kind of was like the first step of just being like, you guys want to do this? And it was like, yeah, wh why not? It just, it seems like a, a no brainer, mostly because I've been, by that point, I had already gotten asked like a million times <laughs> of being like, you guys ever going to make a module? And it was just like, I even at that panel at PAX, somebody had asked me that. And at the time, before I even talked to Rico, it was like, nah, <laughs> because I didn't know how we could possibly uh, like adopt, uh, adapt it. Like, how, how could you pop? Because it was so personal. Mm -hmm. Like, do that. But we somehow fan managed to like, no, you totally can. Uh, you just make it their story, not yours. It was just like, yeah. So, um, yeah. And then from there on, it was just us kind of building it. And, and Felix, you decided to, to do it. Yeah. It's because... like one thing led to another. And ultimately, I accepted the challenge. Because, um, spoilers, I wasn't a writer. Or, you know, I guess I am now. But I wasn't then. <laughs> Which is crazy to me, because reading your stuff now, I'm just like, damn, you're good at this. What the hell? <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> like, I'm a writer, and it's just like, what the... What? <laughs> How did you get good like that? Talent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I took on the challenge, and... Yeah, so we just kept going and going and going. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was cool. It was just like... I was really proud of you for taking it on Aww, because, you. Uh, you know, you and I had that conversation of being like, do you want to do this? Because if not, we can get somebody else to write it or like, uh, I, was, I wasn't going to write it, to be honest. I was just yeah, like, he, no. He offered it to me, right? He was saying, do you want to write it yourself or you want someone else to write it? But um, 
I chose to say that I want to wrote um, that I wanted to write this myself because um, of the challenge, because I'm a person that loves challenges, but also um, I didn't know if they could do it justice. Because it's like, you know, I don't know, you know who it. the writers would be, and they don't have all the info that's in my head, right? There's so many tons of tiny little details of the jungle that can be explored, and I want them all to be in there with the right humor and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's but why. they turn out to be a great compliment. Like, their yes. writers are great. Yes, like, the, my um, my editors and the writers are just amazing people. So they're making it even better in every possible way. Yeah, they're pushing it. They're Like, they're pushing it... Um, farther than we thought it could go of just being like what what do you mean we could explore that and like all that other shit and it's just like it's just wild it's wild mm -hmm. how talented these people are and skilled um but yeah it was it was crazy where you were like yeah i'll do it and then so that was 2019 um december mm -hmm. and then you pretty much wrote it from there on out while also running your business yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Fun fact, I own a distillery. <laughs> so I run yeah. that on the side. While I'm not busy authoring. <laughs> uh. Wild. I was like, I don't know how you're doing that. You you wrote so much, too. It was just like, what the... F how? And it's... Oh. So, yeah. that's. <laughs> but that's why getting to this point was so rewarding. Because it was like, you were working so hard throughout the entire process so worth it and i mean seeing everybody's reaction getting all this love and seeing the kickstarter is just worth it every single day so worth it uh yep. anyways that's the origin story i guess <laughs> yep um what else do we got here um diamond dolphin got a few questions um uh, number one will we be seeing thumbfoot on snoot through the videos Saw them in, but I don't remember seeing them in the videos. I don't think so, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, you, I don't you know. did encounter him we and work with him, did, right? We did encounter him. We did work with him. But I don't know if he's going to be relevant enough to make a whole story out of. Like, you might see him mentioned to be like, we did this thing with the thing, and that was the thing. Like, maybe. But he's not a, like a very... <laughs> What? That's some 10 out of 10 description there. <laughs> Look, man. Uh, yes, giving people context of doing the thing with the thing and the thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know how D&D goes. But, um... <laughs> uh, yeah. You're not gonna see... I don't think you're gonna see that at least explored. You're not gonna get his his origin story, and you're not gonna get his whole, like, you know, his, his relationship with Snoot. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, saying that, you won't get that in the videos. You'll get the full context in the book. That's true. That's true. You yeah. will get the full context. Each NPC is there with full backstories and everything. So you get it all. Um, he also had another question. Potentially in the future, would we be able to buy the metal coins as an add-on? Uh, potentially, yes. Um, like I said, for just a few Kickstarter exclusive exceptions, like for example, the Tarask pin, uh, you can only get those during the Kickstarter. But most of the content, probably a good like 95%, if not more, uh, you can all buy that after the Kickstarter is done. Because, um, so after the actual campaign is done, it goes to Backer Kit, where you can still place orders uh, late. And then also there will be the full release, hopefully by September of next year. And then it's just going to be regularly available in the Hitpoint Press Store. And if I'm understanding some of these emails correctly, maybe even in game stores near you? Uh, which blows my mind. Yeah, like retailer talk or whatever. There's retailers and distributors that, are, that came and it's like, yo, we want your stuff. And it's like, um. um okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, look forward to that. Um, damn, crazy. And there was a, one more question. Will the music album be released over time, similar to Bandarico and Proclaimer Ruins? Or will the rest, oh, which by the way, it's still looping. Or will the rest is of it, it be released when the oh, Kickstarter the items go live now that it is unlocked? Um, I'm pretty sure. So we, we, of course, have a few teasers that are here public. But I think the rest of the album will go in one chunk. Am I right to assume that? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure like a good chunk of it's going to be just in the album. But we, I don't know how much 
like more will reveal it's kind of like we we reveal them periodically of just being like a little sprinkle there a little sprinkle there just to get like yeah look at this this cool thing we made but um yeah i'm not entirely sure i know we're not going to release the whole thing on youtube or anything like that i don't think mm -hmm. um yeah that's that's what i'm my thoughts are on that mm -hmm. um, yeah here's a question i saw earlier uh, from one exile one uh will this book have volumes it'd be great to have legend of driz vibes um uh, so fool's gold itself this book is focused on the bellowing wilds but it does talk about the larger world behind it called ambria and if things continue to go as they do I will be making more books in the Fool's Gold series that will all take place in parts of those, in, in different parts of Ambria. So the Bellowing Wilds, you know, it's that big man-eating jungle and we'll just kill anybody that comes in and hunt you down. Um, but there is uh, so much more to the world of Ambria that I'd love to get into. Yes. And if things go well, I will. Then I'll make oh, the books. I'm well, and if things go well, maybe maybe you'll see this character in, like, maybe mm -hmm. another book. Who knows? Yeah, because if you know. take a peek at the bottom right corner of the screen, that bad boy is going to be in another installment of Fool's Gold. And if that hits, I want to make a book for it. Yeah, boy! Yeah, boy! I'm so excited for that. Oh, yeah. guys, this, this guy is such a disaster. I'm looking forward to him if I get to play him. <laughs> I think I will. Oh, I think so. Yeah, he's just, he's such a disaster. Uh, okay, here's another question. This one is, <laughs> this question is from Average Joe. How many NPCs did Felix have that were turned into major NPCs that you kept in the book? All of them. There's yep. a crap ton of NPCs in the book. Um, important and minor roles, they're both in there. So, you know, you want to know all about Kinora's backstory, but how she rose to power and Alchemist Quarry, you can read about that. You can also read about some very peculiar bookshop owners and why they're offering the quests they do. So, basically, all that juicy GM ammunition that you crave is there. <laughs> yeah. And also, a lot of the NPCs are written with um, like things like fears and motivations. So, you can easily take them, put them into a different setting or a different part of the world, and you'll automatically know how to jam them. Super easy. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me just see if I can find... Okay, we got some people asking about some of the races that we have. We can talk about... You want to talk about a race in today's Q&A? Uh, sure. I mean, we already know... You already know, um, the four claimers. What? They're in the book? Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, what? What? Um, uh, so we already know that's a thing. Uh, and then if you watched the Kickstarter video, you would also know that we're going to be diving into Gorthan's race as well. Yep. And um, Sips. Well, kind of. Well, kind Let's of. say Abby. Abby's race. Yeah, Abby's race. And then, yeah. Yeah. And if you caught some of the recent um, Fool's Gold games that some people have been uh, streaming on Twitch and YouTube, there was another race revealed. Uh, they are called the Weavers. Which I can talk a little bit about, I guess. I yeah, get... yeah. I won't get too much into their lore because I, you know, I want to keep some for later. I don't want to spoil everything. Um, the Weavers are also, I don't know if they'll be featured in the videos because the party kind of avoided that whole area of the map for no reason. We, yeah, we just, it never really came up, that whole area. And then it just, I mean, then the campaign was done. And it was like, oh, right, that place, that place exists. Oh, mm -hmm. We never went there. Well... Okay, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. We have the race of weavers in the book. And what they are is uh, basically the idea behind them is spider folk. But not something like driders. 
basically the you can have any race you want go for like an elf or an orc or something like that and there is a certain ritual you can undergo as that character and to be turned into a weaver do you happen to have a picture of miri not on me darn okay then never mind um but you get some like facial features that are a bit reminiscent of uh, a spider uh, you'll also get four additional limbs to your character that protrude from your back. So you actually have spore, uh, four spider leggies. And there are different... High fives! Yeah, you get uh, six high fives at once. Uh, and you can also... Um... Got my train of thought for a second. Four extra legs, six high fives. There's also different uh, sub-races of the weavers, which have different abilities, which are modeled after different types of spiders. So there's like the uh, the Acrobatios Weaver, which is kind of like a jumping spider. So they tend to be more colorful, fuzzy, and they're, you know, they can jump like no tomorrow. They can jump so much. God, my, my, my sentences are leaving me right now. Well, uh, and they're also, they're not as horrifying as you'd think. They're actually like, quite cute. They're, they're actually cute. really cute. And like, because uh, cause I, um, I, I hate spiders to my core. I'm sorry, pe spider lovers, but I, I, I hate them. Um, but weavers are, are like, they're cool. I actually really like them. And I was just like, damn, I wish I play, like, yeah. I, I want to play one of those. Like, those are so cool. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think you guys would really like, like weavers. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, with all the sub races mm -hmm. and abilities they have, which are some really cool ones, uh, I'm really proud of them. Uh, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with them and yeah. don't worry about arachnophobia. I think you'll be able to enjoy these guys uh, without any problems. Yeah, because uh, even uh, so, Goth uh, Gothi's player does the art, and um, and sh she she hates spiders. She fucking hates spiders, and she had to do the art for them. So if she can do it. <laughs> so can you. <laughs> 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 so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Another teaser. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see what other questions we have. When is the next episode? The suspense is killing me. I think you can actually answer that one, can't you, Dingo? Yeah. So I'm currently working on episode 23 right now. And it is... I am anticipating it'll be... November 10th or 11th or so. So it's not like super crazy far away. Um, so yeah, the second week of November is kind of what I'm shooting for. I am shooting for the week before the Kickstarter's done. Because I want to give the Kickstarter one last, like, ta-da, like, here, here's a push, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I can do that, then, um, that's, that's my goal. So, uh, and so far I'm three minutes in. So that's not terrible. Um... And then I think in total the episode's probably going to be around 14 minutes, 13 minutes. I kind of kept this one a little shorter because I knew I had a tighter deadline. So, um, mm -hmm. what, but we still got... Getting, we're not getting the 120 minutes so, special? Yeah, or like the... Bruh. The full 20 minutes is like, bruh. Bruh. I'm sorry, my my body is tired. I'm so no 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 the, the 120 minutes like feature film is that's the one no. I'm talking about. Dude, like, uh, Carson, like Arena's player went through all the episodes, uh, the day before the Kickstarter to help promote, right. and, um, I think it took him five hours, and I was like, what? What do you mean? My stuff took five hours. So I felt bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> Five hours of your nonsense. Yeah, I was just like, oh, you poor soul. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, it's, I already have feature-like films. I have a couple now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm having trouble with this mouth. Maybe you go yeah. back to fixing the sword. Ugh. <laughs> There's so much. Yeah. Okay, I got another good question just now. Uh, Necrosylum asked, is soul magic gonna be accessible or is that only something NPCs can do? 
I'm happy to report that Soul Magic is in the book and it is accessible um, by wizards, warlocks, I think just the two of them. Maybe some cleric spells in there too. But yes, it is accessible. And not just that, I also made an entire new, I guess I'll call it a sub-school of magic. I'm still arguing with the editors whether it's a school or sub-school. Uh, but Oniromancy, the magic of dreams. So there's actually an entire, well, two almost entire new spellbooks in there. One just focused on soul magic, and one of them just focused on dream magic. And most of them go through um, almost all of the different like spell levels. So there's something for everyone. Except soul magic is a bit more high tier. You can imagine why. Because <laughs> it's... Yeah. It's soul magic. It's a bit it's, powerful. It's a lot. It's a lot. I didn't even use it much. Because I was just like, nah. <laughs> it no. takes away a lot. <laughs> for me. Because I was just like, no, nah, too powerful. I don't want to. I don't want to just simply just push the soul out of things. I want to actually kill them. Mm hmm. Well, and Sips didn't feel right about it, so mm -hmm. I kind of nerfed it. I nerfed it myself using roleplay. So. Yeah. Which, thank you. Thank you for that. Well, it's like I know how to. Like, you usually give us stuff that's really powerful, but we usually nerf it ourselves with roleplay, where our character's like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. So. <laughs> um. Let's see what other questions we've got. Soup is asking. Ooh. Uh, will the plot of the module require the Tarask to be released in the village Sips almost ended the world with his, ho with his horrible karaoke? <laughs> uh, the answer is no. You can do whatever the hell you want with the Tarask, and that's up to your GM. It is not... Uh, you're not locked into any story paths. So if you want to sing karaoke and you happen to roll the same wild magic roll that Sips did, you happen to release the Tarras because you were in the right spot, sure, that'll happen. My god, if that actually happened, that would Completely be like... Randomly. I'd call bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was fudging the dice. Somebody fudging the dice because that seems like very... Like, somebody do the math on that. That doesn't seem possible. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of math that would take for that moment. Oh, God, yeah. The, the odds are, are nuts. Well, we were just talking... Actually, we were just talking about that today. On, like, how nuts it is. Uh, all of this stuff is, like, lined up. Of just, like, yeah. Having the terrace pop out at, the, at that time was, like... Yeah, just because you rolled two, two d d hundreds you rolled the first d hundred which when i went wild and then the second d hundred which was that you know uh uh 700 foot radius of of dead magic and then you happen to have a t-rex so like like there's so much like yeah that's crazy how that mm -hmm. happened when i really think back to it but yeah because i i didn't fudge it you know no 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 we actually watched you look at the list and we were like no and then um that was wild. That that was just a wild moment. Yeah, that was absolutely crazy. Yeah. Uh, what other questions? Get out of here. Will the book contain sneeze? Sneeze inside the book? Well, I mean, you can sneeze inside the book, but uh, yes, it will contain sneeze. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, Can't get away from sneeze. That's and everything. Yep. Okay. Uh, are you guys gonna make a Discord? This was asked by uh, Benny Boo twenty seven, by the way. Or some sort of social thing for fans to discuss stuff where you post announcements. So we don't have our own dedicated, uh, like, Fool's Gold Discord server. But if you join the Hit Point Press Discord server, the link for that is in the Kickstarter, there is a Fool's Gold section in there. We can chat with other fans and uh, answer, have all your questions answered. And sometimes maybe I'll poke in there too. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, we've thought about doing a Discord or something but it's it comes with a lot of headache because uh you have to mo moderate it uh, and i know you can find moderators for that stuff too but it's like i haven't i don't know i don't know how to vet that i don't know how to find somebody i i'm like yes you know it's just like i have no time for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry uh maybe one day but every time i think about it i always go no not today <laughs> <laughs> um but 
Yeah, because because I've also talked to other creators who have discords, and they're always just like, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have done it if I had known, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. And I'm just always like, ah, okay, okay. So uh, it sucks because I do want a place where you guys can all just chat, and and also me just just like, you know, talk about the episode that came out or something like that. But mm-hmm. I don't know. It's still like every time I think about it, my brain is always like. No, <laughs> just because I hear horror stories so often, it's like, ah, oh, god, <laughs> and I don't need that stress. I am, I'm anti drama, absolutely at all, all times. Oh yeah, so. we hate drama. And I mean, if, if there's like, if there's the more time we can commit to creating, the better, right? We don't want to, yeah, uh, yeah, waste time moderating when we could just be working on the next episode, right? Yeah, it's just it's tough because it's like I would. Yeah, I don't know. I have to I have to mull it over my head over and over again. But um, the, the Discord in the Hit Point Press is the closest thing right now, mm-hmm. and I would suggest that. There has been I've creeped there a couple times, looking at what you guys talk about and everything, and and see if I if there's anything cool that or needs help. Um, but uh, there's also people in there who moderate and and answer questions too, which is really really helpful because mm-hmm. I don't have time to answer those questions oh. yeah yeah so. so here's another very important question for you bingo mm-hmm. what kind of monkey is sips i've answered this like a million times um, i know that's why i asked you <laughs> <laughs> you asked no um <laughs> uh okay um oh god see i'm like i'm choosing colors while i'm thinking so uh Multitasking, is, let's go. He's based off of the uh, Japanese bathing monkeys. So, whatever their names are, but there's like those monkeys that chill in those hot, in the hot springs. That's what that hot spring monkeys or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, th- that's what he's based off of. Like his design and um, yeah, it, he's just, he's based off of those things. However, he is definitely bigger than a normal monkey because monkeys are small. Um, He's like five six. Well, five now. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, he uh, he's a big monkey. But I think I don't know if we wanted to add his monkey race to the book, like like an actual creature. Just I don't know. Mm, we'll see. Because they're bigger and they're and they're just like they're, but they're also normal monkeys. So it's just like here's the normal monkey stats. It's just like. I don't think it would add anything. So yeah, I mean, like like I said, everything in the book needs to be adding something unique to it. So if yeah, we, if we have something, even if it wasn't fool's gold, but maybe there's already another supplement out there that did it really well, we're not gonna add it again. No, well, there was a supplement that did like we based Sips's stats off of an ape, right? Yeah, yeah it was From... the uh, the three point five. Um, Supplement or for um oh geez what was it called uh, it basically beast? monstrous race templates yeah basically. something like that yeah I think it was in the beast theory uh, or monster manual or something yeah I don't yeah a long time ago anyways yeah anyway. we'll, we'll see <laughs> um here's a question from depressed Choco Swirl. Is your module beginner friendly? I want to start playing D&D, but don't know where to start. Yes, it is. Um, you should, of course, read the normal D&D books first. Like, you know, the the like you know, Dungeon Master's Guide, Player Handbook, and all that good stuff. Uh, but when you're ready to dive into an adventure, absolutely. Pick up Fool's Gold. Go for it. Yeah, it's it'll be fun. And it's also, it's more lighthearted. It's not very, like, it's, it's serious, but it also has a lot of humor. So... Uh, I think if you want to try and just go for something and just kind of not have to worry about, like, you know, pressure level of, like, it's got to be good, you know, like, perfect. It's like, no, no, no. Fool's Gold's pretty laid back for that. You know, mm-hmm. for five. So, which is what I like about it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here's a question from Gabriel Sandoval. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering your last name. My bad. We're is butchering cost- all their names. You today. know, maybe I should just embrace it and do it on purpose. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to not even meet Jack, or do you have to meet him? Nah. I mean, you can avoid him all you want. Absolutely. <laughs> kill you him can if avoid you want. him. Yeah, you can kill him if you want. Everything's possible in this book. Remember, it's not just a single module. It's a full 
campaign setting. You get the entire world. Yep. And um, all the elements in it, all the puzzle pieces that you can play with. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's a very important question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how floofy is Sneeze? He's... What would I say? He's like... Don't get this wrong. The fans are going to hate you forever. I'm just trying to think of, like, what level of floof is he for, like, animals? Like, what animal would be the closest for for floof? Hmm. Um, Because I don't think he's, like, a cat. I don't think that's... Maybe, like, a short-haired cat. I think that would be accurate. Like a short hair, like a, because I'm thinking of like those big fluffy cats. It's too much. It's too much. So I would say it's soft, like a like a short haired cat. Mm -hmm. I think that's Probably. fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, yeah. Yeah. Here's a question from Draco. What were the origins behind Alchemist Quarry, uh, from the furries to the Tarrasque and such? Um, I'm not gonna reveal the entire like backstory of it because uh honestly i can talk i can probably talk this entire stream about nothing but alchemist quarry so instead i'll refer you in that case to the book so um there's the full backstory of alchemist quarry founding in there there is in there how kinora interacted with it how she took it over and there's also full origin stories behind uh, the furries, for which I actually officially called Beast Folk in the setting. I don't think I heard of them as furry. Just, uh, I'll just change, change just Beast embrace, Folk. We just call them the furries. Embrace, embrace the furry. Yeah. Embrace. Oh, jeez. Don't, don't run away. Embrace. Alright, I have to draw this fucking sword. <laughs> yeah, you can't, oh, you can't keep avoiding it. I know, I keep avoiding, like, almost everything's colored, and, like, eventually I'll just go into full shading, and then mm -hmm. this goddamn sword. Ugh. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, okay, well, this wasn't a repeat, but it's how hard was it to tap the campaign to 5e? Uh, I did talk about it earlier, but I'll just address it again, just quickly saying that. Uh, since it was 3.5, it's fairly simple to port it to 5e, but things just had to be rebalanced. So we did put a lot of very careful effort into making sure that it is properly balanced. Yeah, we also uh, came into the problems of, like, there's a lot of shit in 5e they took out, um, or, yeah, from 3.5. So we, we constantly had stats for things that just didn't exist. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> what do you mean they don't have, like, uh, you know, like, certain scale, uh, types of scales and stuff like that, or, um, for, like, sizes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, which they just kind of changed how that is. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, they just got rid of some things or like certain checks and stuff like that. So we had to. That was a. That was always like a. What do you mean they don't got that? And then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like trying to figure that out. And um, so that was yeah, it's painful. <laughs> um, what else do we have for question? Not a Reaper fifty. You got another one. How much of the illustration did Dingo do for the book? Mm. I mean, it's hard to quantify an exact number, but you're kind of just like one of the artists on it, right? Yeah, I do a couple. Uh, I do a couple pieces. I don't do as much, like, um, I'm mostly the one who tries to look over the art, too, and just make sure everything's consistent. Um, but we do have a wonderful art director for that, which is Justin. Um, mm -hmm. He yeah. does. He's great. He's he did good. the cover. He's awesome. Yeah. He did the cover. Uh, so... My art, I think, let me think, I think I dedicated myself to like three, four pieces in the book mm -hmm. overall. Uh, it's hard to say, though, because I'm we're still in the process of making it. Like, we're still in the process of making the art and doing everything. And um, it depends on my availability because I'm still like my number one is still the episodes because that's just my passion. Um, and I love to do little illustrations and stuff. I did, I did like an illustration for the Kickstarter, you know, I made the video and all that stuff, but in the book, it's, it's a, it's probably a little less, it's definitely less, uh, mostly because we have artists that are like amazing that I want to see their art in there. 
<laughs> <laughs> my art is just like, you know, like I'm not, I'm not, I don't really consider myself like an illustrator per se. Like, you know, somebody, like an illustrator in my mind is somebody who like dedicates to making beautiful pictures to be, you know, put on posters and like, um, put in, put on shirts and buttons and things like that. Like my, my stuff is, it's good. Like, don't get me wrong. Like I, I worked fucking hard to get to a point where I could draw really well. But um, I, I like to put that work towards people who actually dedicate their lives to making beautiful shit. Yeah. We have some, oh, such good art. I get so yeah. giddy whenever yeah. we get such, like a new piece in. It's like, hey, Felix, yeah. could you review this piece? I'm like, oh, 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 oh hell yeah. <laughs> it cracks knuckles. Cracks knuckles. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm also really excited that uh, Gothi's play is doing a lot of the art. Uh, like she's mm -hmm. lead, she's lead artist, yeah. and um, uh, because we, we pretty much like, like the reason my art style is the way it is is because her and I are friends, because we both work together all the time, and then her style became my style, and my style became her style. So you're gonna just see her style, which looks a lot like my style in the book as well. So um, yeah, she did, she did a lot already. Yeah coming together so nicely yes yes all right well then we've got another question here uh, and that is can we get a signed copy of the book that was asked by someone named hi there not so you can't get one through the kickstarter because we probably spend like two months straight just signing things. Yeah, we actually like thought about doing we that. Thought we thought about like, it. oh, could we do it? And then uh, we were targeting a hit point. And they're like, you know how long that would take you? And it's just yeah. like, oh, right. Okay, never mind. And also it would destroy my hand. It's like, I need that. Yeah. <laughs> and, <it's, laughs> and it wasn't as personal as we liked it to be. Because you know, you're just yeah. kind of mass signing things, right? So I, I yeah, prefer doing something a bit more um, special. Well, yeah. So... If you do want a signed book, uh, once you get it, come see us at a convention because we're actually going to be doing book signings as soon as we can. Most likely yeah. with the launch of the book. So we'll be traveling around a bunch of conventions, um, maybe even all over the world. Oh, that'd be awesome. And uh, come see us that'd there. Be wild if that we actually got to do that. But that's also like, yeah, that would that'd be crazy. I mean, the whole country I know we could go to is Germany. Uh, so <laughs> we could do a German assignment. I'll translate everything that. for you. It's all the German fans just scream all the love at you, and you're just like, ah, it sounds so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I know what German sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just always funny to me how aggressive it sounds when people yeah. aren't used to it. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't remember what the, the question was. No, book signings blanking. and can you get a signed oh, copy right. so visit yeah, us yeah, at conventions we're... and we'll get yeah. you your signature and a nice that's... message to boot yeah that's pretty much how we're gonna take it it's just we're gonna do it that way um it's just easier for everyone <laughs> <laughs> and my hand <laughs> yeah <laughs> did a gm screaming to come to australia hell yeah we're gonna come to australia <laughs> if we can oh yeah totally i mean i i also want to go to um Australian VidCon. Yeah. Uh, I or think. PAX even maybe. Yeah, I mean PAX is probably well. Isn't PAX mostly towards video games? Then tabletop. It's a bunch of nerds. Who cares? I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. It's just all compiled what, of nerds. What are we gonna so discriminate? Really oh, you you not you not video gamers? Get out of the convention. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess so. You just, uh... just show up at the door and they're like, Nah, get out. <laughs> Nah. Nah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> While throwing snakes at you. What? Um. <laughs> there it is. Uh. Oh, shit. Okay. Another one. Question Another. from Kenny Holmes. Are Necromart and Prayer Saras included in the book? Asking for a friend. Sure you are. Uh, yes, they are. They're going to be in there. Oh, yeah. You yeah, they can are. put them wherever, in whichever town you want. There's a few uh, general ideas of where they're going to be. But again, you got the steering wheel. You put them where you like, and you can absolutely go buy all their bonkers shit. And maybe even get a discount. Yeah, maybe. Um... The world is your oyster. 
so here's a question. Unfortunately, I just lost it in the chat, but I, I so I just don't know who asked it. My apologies. But someone was asking about if we're doing something for Sips's wild magic. <laughs> and oh boy, are we doing something for that? Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, so yes, there are gigantic wild magic tables. And you'll you'll hear the s at the end of that. There is multiple wild magic tables with literally hundreds of effects that you can put your players through. Um, it is a bonkers chart, and that one does not hold back. Uh, it's a bit broken in the favor of humor and a good time and a crazy time. So, yeah. Which will put a big disclaimer on it. There is a big disclaimer. I actually have to write one in the book like, yo. You can pussy out if you want. <laughs> 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 but uh, not only that, we've got the wild magic charts um, for Sips. We've got the mechanic of Sips in there also for his cursed arm. And we've got brand new cursed charts. So... Yeah, not just cursed arm. Like, you can have cursed whatever you want. Exactly. But, um, we made the whole mechanic so it's like, oh, you want to be cursed for some reason? Then uh, we got you. We got you covered for some suffering. <laughs> yep. Suffering included. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, the wild magic is absolutely nuts. And, uh... I look forward to all the stories of people talking about, like, Felix, you broke our entire campaign with your bullshit. And I'll be like, yeah, yeah I did. As you leave. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, sipping player tears at night. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, let me let's see. What other questions do we got? Um, by the way, Wait. I... What? What do you think? What am I picture? Good. Nice. Yeah, they're looking good. Yeah. You want to tell people a bit, a uh, little bit about him because I've got the, uh, the stretch goal for him on the stream, in the bottom right. right corner. Yes. So I won't, I won't talk too much about it because I want to do that if we get the, the stretch goal. But essentially, what we wanted to do for a very long time is to do a podcast, uh, for kind of like our next campaign. Um, uh, for actually in public eye because we've already, we played <laughs> other campaigns after Fool's Gold. Like I've been in two more um, since Fool's Gold. So, um, but we were just like, well, we want to do one that's actually public that people could have fun with, and we want to talk about and you know build characters, and you could see us play and um, see the chaos that does happen in our fucking games. I've definitely realized I'm a chaotic player. Um, <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny because, like, my other previous characters, like, um, uh, like after Sips, we had um, Lesia. She was pretty cautious. She was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, <laughs> this one, I wanted, I wanted to do uh, a character that was much more um, free, uh, free flowing of like. Well, he's essentially like, like a fuckboy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, way to pitch your fucking character to the audience. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to say it, but he's he's like he loves to party, he loves to do whatever he wants, and uh, he has he's a, essentially an adrenaline junkie. He just he lives on the edge all the time, and he loves hanging out with people. He loves to party. He's absolutely the opposite of Sips on that. Um, he's like the extrovert the extreme extrovert um who just wants to hang out and party and he's just like yo bro but he's he he's not totally a bro bro but um he thinks yeah. he knows everything Total dude, he bro. Really, <laughs> dude bro no 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 i guess not dude bro but he's he's more just like he knows uh he he thinks he knows stuff but he doesn't and um he's really he's just a disaster but he's like a fun disaster who's just like trying to get by and um he doesn't want uh he, he doesn't want anybody to tell him what to do but that kind of falls in all my characters because i'm just that part person mm -hmm. um but he i want him to be a very chaotic good like that he really likes people and wants to help people and um 
but he's also got the ego of just like he wants to be like bigger than life and um <laughs> and he's uh uh and he's uh like he's actually quite short <laughs> He's like, and I hates think I every have a minute of it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's just like he doesn't care until somebody brings it up. Um, but he's he's totally that thing where it's just like he is four eight, um, but he'll always say he's five. <laughs> he's always five feet tall. Um, and every person that's four eight in the audience just cringed. <laughs> no, no, like, look, it's just like he is just <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it, no, but of he's course just not. like. He just holds it. He just like people make fun of him, so um, he always tries to take him down a peg to his level, I guess. <laughs> and um, this is speaking from a five foot two woman, <laughs> like I'm, I'm short on my own. Um, but yeah, I want him to be energetic. I want him to be fun, and I want him to just like look at the world excited. Um, yeah, that's really the type of character I'm I'm going for for him and. Uh, his, he's got a lot of flaws, as all my characters do, and um, he also has fears and uh, goals and stuff like that, but I think you guys will have fun with him. He's definitely going to be, I mean, I don't actually know who he is, obviously, because I haven't played him. I, fe I feel like people can't, people can't really figure out their character until like, like, for me anyway, I can't figure out my character until like a month or two in. Because it's just like, I don't know. I just kind of hope I get it right. But, you know, if you've ever DM'd and you've had an NPC planned and you're like, okay, this NPC is going to be like this and this and this. And then you open your mouth and then they say something completely different. And you're like, where did that come from? And then that's their character now. And it's like, <laughs> I can't really plan him. It's just like, I know his aesthetic. I know what he looks like. And I know what I'm kind of going for for him. Yeah, the whole calm but... monk thing for Sips didn't work out, did it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was supposed to be calm and collected, but that didn't work. That uh -huh. lasted 30 minutes. That lasted 30 minutes because Gorthan, uh -huh. because Gorthan pissed me off. And it was like, <laughs> you know what? And then, uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was history at that point. I don't know. I don't even know why I tried. Like, I can't really have a calm, cool, collected character so easily. Um, though Bree's pretty calming, calming. Um, anyway, so that was me attempting to explain my character and Yay. hopefully to get some sort of, um, podcast going on and it's going to be a 2v1. Yeah. It's going to be a bit more, ooh, wait, is intimate the right word? More like, you know, well, small. focused, I guess. It's going to be more focused, more, small. It's very role play heavy, very story heavy. Um, we'll see what happens. I'm kind of letting this, if it happens, like. Because this is a stretch goal right now. Uh, if this happens, it's definitely going to be an experiment. Because I've never actually played a full campaign in front of people. I've played live before. And, like, I've played, you know, recorded sessions. Like, the the um, the clerics. That was fun. Mm -hmm. But an actual, like, full campaign front to back. Where you guys can see the growth of the characters. And, like, that. Like, I've never done that with public thought so um but i'm hoping the public actually doesn't change my playing style because i still want the character to kind of just be the character anyway we kind of went on a tangent i went on a tangent that, that characters, a tangent. i'm sorry characters are really important to me almost like um, you're passionate about story and characters or something yeah yeah i guess so mm, guess so, so we'll we'll see how it goes i've never seen a, a podcast done that's uh 2v1 um for D D. There probably are out there. Seen. There's definitely some out there. Yeah, there's there's definitely probably some out there. So, uh, but I know for myself that I love two v one, and um, so I'm excited. I'm very very excited if we get to do it. Yeah. Uh, actually, someone just asked a relevant question to that. Uh, Jospel asks, uh, "Will the Fool's Gold two campaign take place in the same world as the one we're currently in?" And yes, it does. It's not in the Bellowing Wilds, which is the jungle. But it is in the overall world of Ambria. So still in the Fool's Gold universe, different continent. Totally still there. Yeah, it's going to take place in um, desert sand. That's why it's called Sands. Desert campaign. Sands. 
yeah, desert campaign, which I don't think I've seen either. So, mm -hmm. I've wanted to play in a desert campaign for so fucking long. Oh, and I've got so much world building queued up for it, dude. Oh, I'm so yeah. excited! It's gonna be so good. Anyways, one hell of a tangent. Let me see if I can get some more questions. Uh, Sorry. For people. No, 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 no. <laughs> Don't let me to shame you for it. Got people. Well, no, I, I feel details. bad because I know a lot of people are here for getting their questions answered. Well, I've, I've queued a few up, so I made sure not to miss any. Oh. Um, so, uh, there was a couple of people that asked, "Are the blood moon berries in the book?" Yes, they are. Yep. Um, like I mentioned, pretty much everything you've seen in the videos is actually in the book. So that definitely includes the Blood Moon Berries. They have full stats, um, everything you need to know about them, the effects, the value, where to find them. Um, and you can definitely go mess around with them as you like. <laughs> I'm not going to hold your hand. Not like such a dad. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm, you're on your own, son. Uh... <laughs> uh, oh, my God. What? This is just like a relic popped in. What? Yeah, uh, <laughs> someone's bringing up the glorious days of uh, Meme Center. Remember that? Oh my god! With, with, um... We've got a real OG fan in oh here. Oh my god! From Yo. Electric Bunny. Yes, no. Electric Bunny fan. Let's Yo. go. Spear shark. Don't tell them. <laughs> Don't no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Don't tell them about my past. No, I'm just kidding. The hidden um, dark past that is electricbunnycomics.com. Yeah, yeah. Don't go yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh good old times. Um, what do we got here? Um, Tezas Jazz? Tezas Jazz? I want to ask gonna, Felix how he's... Huh? Destroy these names no matter what. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying my best, man. I know. Yeah, that's true. You're trying. I don't want to be a dick. How he sound? How does Felix sound while speaking for characters that we're hearing from Dingo, like Vicky? Oh, like how I voice acted them? I mean, it depends. Vicky's like very cute, you know. Kind of like that. <clears throat> I'm gonna get my voice is a bit rough because we've been doing so much talking, but. Well, um, it also like you're a full grown man. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I, my little girl voice is a bit limited. <laughs> <laughs> but you did a really cute like I I like I love Vicky. Yeah, she was pretty cute. Yeah, and she was actually you know what's a wild chat is um so you guys have seen like how many episodes was Vicky in? Uh five? I think five episodes yeah. Vicky's been in. Um and I only had two sessions with her or three sessions. God. <laughs> you know? You know, it's just like, like the connection we had throughout it, it was just, it was wild. Like, we really only saw each other for like a little bit and like there was a, you know, the character growth and everything like that. But like, I didn't see her very long, even though it feels long, but like in, in session, it's like, no, it was, it wasn't mm -hmm. very long. Yeah. Okay. I still got a few on my queue. God. So many good questions. You guys are awesome. I just want to say that. We love you. We love you so much. Uh, Shadow Reaper asking, is there going to be more content for Kylandria, like classes, magic items, etc., or just a setting? That's to be discovered, to be honest. Um, it's, I'm going to use my usual approach. I'm going to go through everything I had for Kylandria that the party saw and didn't see. And... Everything that's unique, special, and really, you know, worth adding to the book will be added. And it's not limited by content. So if it's an NPC, if it's an item, if it's a class, um, if it's worth adding and it was a Calandria, I'll add it. Cool. Yeah, I'm trying question. to think, like, what would, what kind of class would there be? I have to just go like, through my notes for Calandria and really see what we had there. I mean, maybe, maybe eyes and ears stuff, but I don't know. we'll see. Um, and Roji asks, do you have more stretch goals for the Kickstarter in mind and how far does it reach now? We mm. did make a few extra because we saw how quickly things are progressing. Nervous a way. panic. <laughs> um, so there's some more. <laughs> if, if you really, uh, 
gonna do that, uh, we will we will promise we're gonna have some uh, stretch goals for you guys. Some really good ones too, like ones that I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what? No, no, nothing, nothing. <laughs> okay, let's see what I've got. Uh, trip to and radio. Felix, do you have some characters you've played? Can you tell us about it? I mean, I've had lots Aww. of characters I've played. I am a bit of a forever DM, but I did play some characters. Um, We're not a forever DM. A little bit. I've had lots of games. I've DM'd you, so is Gothi's player. It's true, it's true. Fine, I'll relinquish the title. Mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. keep the evil DM title, though. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's mandatory. Yeah. But uh, I love playing all kinds of characters. Um... Like, at the moment, I'm playing a character. His name is Cedric Crackers, or just Mr. Crackers. Uh, and that one is being GM'd by Gothi. Uh, if you want to check out some art on Crackers, there's plenty on Gothi's Twitter, which is at DinahBees, with a Z, if you look that up. Um, and yeah, he's a bit of a dork. Kind of talks like this all day, you know? A little bit of a, uh, it, like, legally distinct Skeletor, and a bit more wholesome. Um, and... Really distinct. Not Skeletor. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he gets into all kinds of problems, and, you know, he's exploring life of being a skeleton, and trying to get himself, uh, trying to protect his family, and, uh, yeah. That's the one that I play with as Bree. Yes. Bree, his best friend, and, uh, polar opposite in a way. <laughs> Absolutely. Although they both have family in common, just in very different ways. Yep. Okay, let's see. Green Mind is asking about what percent of the material is ready for print, but of what goals already unlocked. Um. Oh, like how how things are like, ready? Well, okay. Overall, the book is in a very good state. I will say that. Um, but thanks to the Kickstarter we're able to make it better. So we're gonna dedicate uh, a few more, like we're basically, we're adding more content to it. So whatever percentage we have had before the Kickstarter is now pushed back because we're gonna add more to it, uh, but still in time for our release in September. Um, yes. And in terms of the stretch goals, I mean, that's just something we're working on as it goes. Like, Calandria is at 0%, if you will, <laughs> until the, the actual stretch goals unlocked, right? Yeah, because yeah. we need time and money for that stuff, unfortunately. Yeah, all takes time and money. I was asking, can we change the music now? You know what? I think it's about time I change the music. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, you know what? You can do the four claimer wounds. The other one. That one's at least chill. Yeah, exactly. Let me uh, keep uh, it up for so you. I feel so bad. You know, I'm, I'm, I have to literally wait for my own ad to just to hear this music. That's kind of funny. You know, like it's awesome. Um, like I'll probably post this. This, up. this live stream. Yeah, actually, like, it, it, it automatically does it. Yeah. What? Oh, okay. Well, those poor fucks are <laughs> gonna be listening to the goddamn Bundarika song so goddamn long. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, actually, okay. Here's a good question from Black Belt Gamer ninety eight. Will the stuff from the Halloween one-off be included? Mm. I actually no. have to look into that. Sincerely. Yeah, I don't think so. Because uh, at the moment it's not included because it was very off-brand. So it was just like a random thing I threw in there. And, um, I, you know, it's not properly thought through to be like, ah, yes, this is like an extension of Fool's Gold. It's like, nah, this is just like random event time. You know, like in a video game when they do random ha Halloween events. Oh, wait, are we talking about which Halloween thing? I'm assuming they're talking about um, the haunted mansion. Oh yeah. So okay, yeah. That was that was like yeah, that was random. <laughs> that was us just like yeah. You, that was you just fucking with us. Oh yeah, I just wanted to scare you guys. I didn't care about consistency. And I you did a really good job for it too. You had like sound effects and all that stuff. Oh yeah, I went all out. Ugh, um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. That's a, a maybe. We'll see. Um, what else we got here? So I saw some awesome questions whiz by. I'm just trying to catch them. Um, uh, 
like a game. It is like a game. It's like trying to just like swap flies, but in a good way. Um. Okay. You know, I've got a bit of a uh, somewhat off-topic question, but not really. Uh, Dorian Edward is asking, Hey Felix, lots of hugs. I have this question. Have you ever thought that you were like a bit too aggressive as a DM? Like making something almost meta playing? Trying to be... Trying to really be a villain. What do you mean? I like, don't really like, understand that one. Like, well, I think... There's a kind of two parts to the question. Which is one... If I ever felt like I was kind of like too mean as a DM, mm -hmm. like, you know, too harsh maybe. And I'm guessing the second part is like, did I ever overstep the boundaries of the game and kind of bully someone? Mm -hmm. um, the second one I can quickly address, no. What's, what happens in the game stays in the game. Um, and I'm never trying to bully my friends. My whole goal is trying to give them an awesome time, right? I want to make sure that they come there, they have lots of laughs and maybe some good tears. <laughs> but, you know... It's supposed to be for the greater fun, and I would never overstep my bounds to um, try to make someone uncomfortable or like bully someone. So I want to be careful with that, and I encourage everybody else to also be careful with that. In terms of the other question of have I ever been like too aggressive, like kind of being harsh as a GM? Nah. My players know what they're getting into. Right, Dingo? Yeah, <laughs> but actually, I I do have to say you're not you're not at all harsh. Like if if we actually don't like something, we'll tell you. I don't and know then... if that's ever happened. No, no, I don't think it's ever happened because, uh, I think it's like we just it happens the time it's happening. You know, yeah. like if there's something that comes up. I know there has been, like, something small of just being like, actually, I don't like that. And then we just like, oh, okay, well, yeah. And then we just change it. It, it might have been something very minor. or um, But that's just a conversation mm -hmm. with your DM of just being like, yeah, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just be open and talk about it. But, you know, just trying to make sure everybody has fun and, and you're good. You also make sure, I think this is a big thing that people need to take into account when making it encounters that might be a little tough is you need to make sure that these are beatable encounters yeah uh, you can't just like i don't like the idea of like doing the the um the boss that you can't beat yeah like this is kind of some like random piece of dm advice trivia i guess but um making encounters that are meant to be lost is a bad idea yes um, yeah. avoid it should it. always be a 50 50 yeah. it should always be like it could happen it couldn't happen and just get in get the idea in your mind that um you know it could happen that yeah your big bad could die pretty quick <laughs> and embrace <laughs> it, it just it can, it can happen and and um you can play with that you know you can make something cool with that oh uh, uh carson uh, arena's player just had a really nice summary of my gming style says, Felix is the Dark Souls of GMs. Really tough, rewarding content, but never unfair. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. It's like, get good. <laughs> yeah. Get good! Uh, um, so yeah, make sure everybody has fun. Yes. Uh, here's another question. As a DM who's always looking for maps and assets, where do you go for making your maps? Do you use a generator? Um... So the stuff for the book is actually made by a dedicated map artist. I kind of just give them the blueprint, what goes where, and then they go and make freaking gorgeous maps of the stuff I have in mind. Um, I'm blown away when I'm bragging everybody... all over. You bragging, bro? I'm bragging on behalf of the <laughs> artist, man. Gorgeous maps. So good. Ah! But it's, you know, <laughs> not made by me. Made by the artist. <laughs> yeah. Um, but for me myself. If I ever work on maps, uh, I use Incarnate. I just love that program. It just jives with me. I, I'm paying for it too, and it's like, I really like it. So if you guys just want to make some world maps or dungeon maps, check out Incarnate. Shut up. Love their stuff. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Blizzard the Kleptomaniac wants to know, may I destroy the world maybe? Yes, you may. Do whatever you want in your own world of it. Go for it. You you can. I I, I mean to take that more seriously. You, have, like, the you power. have the power, and all the rules and all the logic to destroy the world within the book properly. So yes. 
Um, Felix, any tips for someone writing their own supplement? Any do's and don'ts, things you've learned so far in the process? From Ralvik. Thanks for the question. Um, Ralvik, that's cool. I've definitely learned lots. Um, again, that could be in a, like a, a three hour long video, but it can be very easy to GM on the fly. And like, I'm really good at improv and I love improv. I really enjoy it. But when you write a book, while you can do some of that, you have to think of every little detail, right? Like if I make a mechanic, I know how my players would react to it. But I know there's people out there that might play this at like a tournament or at their own table, and they might have a hardcore power gamer at their table. So how do you account for that? So you have to make sure it can't be abused. And then you have to think, well, okay, if you're writing lore, you might accidentally be writing some lore that someone has a troubled history with. You know, how can you make sure you get across some really nice lore, you know, without um, excluding anybody? Like those kinds of things. So. It's a lot of little details like that, but uh, yeah, there, there's a lot to be learned uh, and it's really just a lot of it is thinking beyond just the immediate session. So, I think I, that's how I could best summarize it, but again, that's like a super... It's a good, super it's a good summary though. Yeah. It's a super long topic, to be honest. Um, Here's like a jamming question. I don't mind answering this one. We can do some more cool, cool questions after one, afterwards. But uh, when I'm playing an enemy, so does sir Felix? When you're playing an enemy in a fight, do you give them a goal, or is it always kill the party? Because being new to jamming, I worry about aiming to kill the players as the enemy and allowing them to live so they can actually play. That's a great question for jamming in general. Um, I rarely just aim to kill the party, to be honest. Yep. Um. If there is, um, give me one second, there we go. Um, so any monster for me has to have an agenda, right? If it's a ravenous animal, it wants to eat. If it's a bandit, well, maybe they want to extort you for something. Um, rarely ever, you know, is there a person out there that will fight you to the death over like a stick or a weapon, I don't know, you know? So absolutely think about what are their goals? Why are they fighting? Might they surrender? Or, you know, if they're bandits, perhaps they're just capturing a player and, you know, holding a knife to their throat and turning to the rest of the party saying, hey, surrender, or I'm going to cut your, your ally's throat, right? So, uh, no, you've got the, you've got the right uh, mindset with that one. It's just, don't just think everything just wants to kill the party. They have an agenda, and it can be really fun to explore it. Because it also makes for a lot of, like, Weird conversations, you know, if, if the party gets ambushed, they might ask, like, why did you ambush us? And they're like, well, you know, we love the smell of your food. We wanted some food. <laughs> I don't know. So. Yeah, I really like your bag. Yeah. Really want your bag, so I wanted to steal it. Uh, yeah, anyways. Um, let's see here. Redcore is asking a question to you, Dingo. Would you animate the new podcast to supplement it? Uh, uh what I want to do, uh, so that's a good question, is uh, I want to take snippets of it. Uh, so, like, you know, sound clips, and then just animate on top. Um, things that I think are funny and stuff like that, mostly because, uh, you know, Doing an entire campaign retelling is exhausting, and there's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, and also, uh, you need to have the campaign done. Uh, I, I think that you need to see the campaign as a first draft, and then when you retell it, that's your second draft. Like, I've moved things, I've changed things, I've made things more um, uh, absorbable to, for the masses to understand. So, uh, when it comes to, like, this campaign, uh, it's definitely, like, um, it, it's most likely just gonna be, uh, a live thing, and then, and then I'll see what I can do with it. To be honest, what I really want to do with it, if it turns out that we really like it, is I'd love to make a pilot and then pitch it. That'd be awesome. That'd be, that'd be goals, but, uh. Yeah. 
And it's, yeah. you know, it's something different to go out and animate an entire campaign as an animated show like Dingo's doing. And, you know, just making like an animation of like a best moment that's isolated. Yeah, it's yeah, because that's that's kind of what I would want to do is just like do a little fun, th fun thing. Because then it will also just like get people interested because be like, what is this about? And then just like find the crazy, crazy stuff that comes with it. Because uh, I think D and D podcasts. I mean, you can throw a rock and find a D and D podcast. <laughs> um, like, it's just like it's so easy. And I know that going into this, if we get the podcast, it's like I don't think a lot of people are gonna listen to it. But it's just like we're just doing it for fun. This is for us in a yeah. way. All right, let's do another question. Okay. North T Commando. Uh, in the sand setting for Fool's Gold Two, will there be special sand weather effects? You'll just have to wait and see. I'm not gonna spoil mm -hmm. anything. No spoilers, because I don't even know. No, like, they, like, okay, let me just explain real quick. I don't tell my players anything for these new campaigns. I'll tell them enough for their characters, like, what they would need for their own context. But I don't, like, spoil things to them. Dingo has no idea what I've got planned for Sans, so I'm definitely not going to spoil any of it. No, and I don't even know what he's got planned for, like, my character um, at all. So, yeah. uh... Only see. the best. Mwah. <laughs> Yeah, which which I will say, uh, his name is. Put it up. Might as well so sign it. Eh? Yeah, yeah, I just put it up, and yeah, and I'll put it red because it's nice. But I mean, yeah. God, you have nice writing. Thank you. Yeah. That's his name. R Rooster. Um, because I mean, come on. His hair is stupid, so <laughs> it looks like a rooster thing. And that's what I was like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's not stupid, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to play that campaign with you. Hell yeah. It's going to be fun. So, this is the final stretch of questions. Yeah. i got to get some dinner soon. Uh, you know, maybe I'll like speed run some of these. Um, Joker Jester wants to know, is Spales... <clears throat> is spell scale a race in the book? No, it's not. Because it already exists, and I'm not going to add uh, something that already exists. If you go out and look for spell scale, uh, you may have to check for in the 3.5 uh, edition. You will find it. Let's see. Oh god, so many questions. Uh, will the campaign book come with a, que a section that instructs the players on some basic information they need to know? So... It will talk about um, jungle-specific things, like, you know, a bit of an intro to get people into the setting. But the basics of D&D, &D, I mean, you're better, better off looking at the player handbook, the dungeon master guide, you know, the, the usual stuff. Um, question. In the Fool's Gold campaign, curses don't stack, so does having a curse that barely does anything make you immune to other curses, or does the stronger one replace it? Up to your GM. In my case, yeah. it makes you immune, but my curses aren't weak. I don't have such weak curses. <laughs> well, it, I think he also might be talking about, um, uh, like, Sips's curses. There are some curses that were pretty weak. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, you grow an inch mm -hmm. tall. And then it was like, yeah, you're immune now. Good for you. Like, you're actually lucky now. <laughs> you can't, Sips can't do shit to you now. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, another question from Roscoe. How do you go about making bosses? Um, think about what your players would do and then how to combat it. Uh, you answered your own question. Exactly. Think of how to make an interesting experience. It's just like another encounter, but, you know, it's almost like telling a story in the middle of the fight. You've got the right idea. I'll, I'll leave you to that. Um, looking through... Man, drawing gold is hard. Oh, you know what? There's like a certain artist you can ask for that now. Because <laughs> Gothi's artist drew the most amazing like gold armor for the book. And now it's like anything gold, you go to her. Like if you have any gold based commissions, Dinah B's on Twitter. She can hook you up some gold. You know, she's going to hate you for that now. Absolutely, she's like, because I'm she's so going to get flooded with tired. fucking gold commissions. Oh, gold! <laughs> uh, uh, 
Why do you hate the sheeps? You'll have to find out. <laughs> um, buy the book. <laughs> Paywall. Um, yeah. will there be I will version... talk about it hmm? eventually. Yeah, eventually. It's not an actual paywall. Will there be a version of Fool's Gold for Pathfinder? I will be honest with you. Probably not. But it's not entirely off the table. Um, but it's not something we currently have planned. So who knows? Maybe something changes and we do that. But I would say um, don't count on it, unfortunately. Luckily, you know, 5e is pretty easy to convert. So, so far, the onus is kind of on you to do that. Yes. Um, Giving them homework. What is gold if not shiny cheese? Thank you. <laughs> oh, is this my cheese boy? Yeah, cheese boy. <laughs> Canadian bard. Woo, Canada. Yeah. Uh, question for Felix. Are there any obscure prehistoric animals that you used as inspiration for some of the monsters in the book? And if so, what are they? Yeah. Yes, lots. Um, there's literally mech dinosaurs in the book. Um, so there's the charger, which is like a mech raptor. There is the obliterator, uh, the, uh, pe the, um... Such you. Such a you name. I know, The right? obliterator. Thank you. Thank you. I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> there is also, like, you know, the terraformer and stuff. Like, there's a lot of, um, mech dinosaurs. But also, uh, a lot of monster design can be inspired subconsciously by prehistoric creatures, right? So... Like, I don't know how to express that really. No, let me say it differently. There's actually monsters in the book that have prehistoric origins explained in them. So, some creatures you'll actually kind of see how they came to be in the first place. And then how they existed on their own. So, if you're into that kind of stuff, absolutely, you can uh, enjoy that in the book. And, I mean, I love prehistoric stuff like my remember I'm, i mentioned i have a distillery it's all themed about dinosaurs <laughs> so it is the it totally entire is, yeah. it's called i mean i'll, I'll plug it. it's called t-rex distillery um so it's it's in the name right and all the the liquor i make is all named after dinosaurs and prehistoric animals so absolutely i love that shit <laughs> ah someone wants a beach episode of the clerics oh yeah the amen yeah <laughs> Yeah. Why are the wilds bellowing? You know what? The question sounds kind of funny, but that was literally the last meeting I had with my editor. That was his question. Why are they called bellowing wilds? And I had to come up with an entire reasoning behind it. Well, not come up with, like, tell him the reasoning behind it. So, funny question, actually quite valid. <laughs> you didn't answer it! What? You didn't answer it. Oh, should I? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's up to you. Well, but... no, you know what? No, you know, this is fine. I'll answer it. Because um, I was going to be like, check the book. But like, nah, I'll tell you. But um, so there's a bit of a funny story behind the name Bellowing Wilds. <laughs> In the official version. It's called the Bellowing Wilds because, you know, it's a super dangerous jungle teeming with all sorts of dangerous monsters. And... They, um, you know, they make loud noises, they roar, and they're scary, and that's, you know, they bellow. And that's what you hear all over the jungle. Going in there, you can hear how dangerous it is. It's the name, Bellowing Wilds. In the unofficial version, I fucked up. Because, I, so German is my first language, English is my second language. And when I named the campaign, I switched up the words billowing and bellowing because i thought they meant the opposites right so i was assumed because originally i named it after like the billowing like fog that's kind of above this jungle not realizing it's um bellowing does not mean billowing yeah yeah because you didn't find that out until like after the oh. campaign like years well, after I, the campaign. It was it was recent. It was like six months ago or seven months ago. Yeah, I, I got remember like... just having this conversation, and then because uh, you didn't, you still didn't know, 
And then we were talking about it, and then it's like, yeah, because, you know, the shouting and stuff like that, and you're, you're like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, because it's the, you know, the sounds of the monsters and everything like that. Like, that's the the bellowing wilds, and you're like, I thought, wait, no, well, no, it's, <laughs> you know, we're like, no, actually, be bell bellowing means shouting, and you're like, no, no, and then you had to, like, look it up. Yeah, it's like, I looked it up, like, Damn. You're like, God damn it! <laughs> totally oh, messed idiot. up. <laughs> well, it's your second language. You get you get a pass. I know I get a pass. Doesn't mean I like it. It was so funny though. We we were laughing about that. It's like the brizier breezy. <laughs> the time I described this grand, magnificent brazier in the jungle. I meant to say brazier. But God, I confused the hell out of my players. <laughs> what, like a boo? Like a giant like bra? Like a bra? bra? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, someone asked also a question about if the uh, limit, sorry, the um, oh God, the foil version of the book, like the collector's edition, yeah. will be available after the Kickstarter. Do you know? I'm actually second guessing myself. It should be. It should be right. It, it should be. Um, it does. Does Humblewood have a deluxe thing? Because I'm pretty yeah. sure it would say uh, exclusive next to it if it wasn't. Yeah, it would say exclusive. Um, what you can do is you can check on hitpointpress.com, uh, check their website for the Humblewood, because they also did the same thing. And if the Humblewood special edition is still available, then the same would be true for us. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm thinking. Like, I, I think really he's... highly doubt. It would be just an exclusive. Like it's it's it has to say exclusive next to it. So I'm pr yeah, that makes no sense that it would. So. All right. Um. How about let's do three more questions and we'll call it a night. All right, let's do it. Three more questions. I'm, okay. I'm gonna I'm give everybody a chance to type their questions, and uh, then I'll go through and uh, try to. I'll pick randomly. Sorry, like I know there's, there's so many good questions, guys, but of course we've only got so many time, that so much time. See, I can't even talk anymore. Just, mm. Mouth no do thing. Holy shit! I just got what I asked for. Oh my god, there's so many questions. Oh my god. Yeah, because oh. they're just like ah. <laughs> oh, I just skipped like five pages worth. Like oh god, okay. Holy crap, you guys are amazing. Okay, I'm pausing it. Okay, let's see if I can catch one. Um. Like a fish. It's like, <laughs> I can't take a fish. Um, but, but, but. Okay, yeah, I'll answer that one one last time, but it doesn't count against the three question limit. Can you buy X, Y, and Z after the Kickstarter? The answer is yes, you can. Simple as that. You can. Hitpointpress.com, go to the store, buy Unless it says exclusive, but. Unless I it's exclusive, think... it'll say so. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, what happens if a stretch goal isn't made? Does stuff still happen uh, offline, or is it scrapped? Um, well, depends on hard, what it is. It's hard to say. I mean, for example, with something like Sans, we'll see. Yeah, I, it's yeah. It kind of de depends um, on like, you know, are we making a thing? Does it cost money? Then yes. Then it would be like, okay, well, we're not gonna reach it because. Or we can't do it because we don't have the funds. That's the whole point of a Kickstarter is to gra gather funds, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, so I guess we'll see is what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. When it comes to like the podcast and stuff, I guess it's just yeah, like you said, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, of course, we would like to get some funds for it because we want to do some cool stuff with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh. I think I think the the rule of thumb here is if it caught if you if it's a physical product it's not going to happen um unless we somehow pull it out of our ass and <laughs> do it <laughs> uh but yeah that's that's kind of a good rule of thumb yeah for sure <laughs> um so just sifting through them I'm trying to uh, be you know relevant towards like the full school Kickstarter right now. So, yeah, it's you know, gotta be. There's relevant. lots of good questions about like DMing and like 
you know, other topics, which is so much appreciated, but I want to be respectful to everybody's time. Um, da, 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 da. Uh -huh. Um, you caught a fish? I think I may have. So I'm just trying to read through it, you know, kind of vetting it before I go. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> just read it out. I read it out loud. Um, you guys are so nice. <laughs> You feel in the love. Yeah. Uh, will Sips, Gothi Arena, become NPCs in the module? Uh, yep. You can do whatever you want with them, whether you want to put them in or not. It's up to you. What tier will the sheets for the Fool's Gold crew be in? Okay, that's that's kind of a similar question, so I'll count it only as one. <laughs> but um, uh, any tier. So they'll be in the PDF. They'll be in the physical book, uh, like all editions. So uh, anything that gives you access to the PDF will give you access to those character sheets. Um, so you'll have all of that. Um, let's see here. Who's my favorite gold, those gold PC? All of them. And I can't pick favorites, you kidding me? I love them all. Um, Goblin Hero is asking, since I since you plan to make a dire Tarask, you've got to do another setting. Would it be some sort of Spelljammer-like setting? Uh, well, I'm not going to say no, but the next one is, of course, going to be on the desert. Um, and also, I only really call it a dire Tarask just to avoid confusion, because this is just my normal Tarask. But, you know, people will get confused if it's just two different normal Tarasks, right? So we call it a dire Tarask. Well, because it has different stats. We just... Exactly. I rebalanced... Needed a beefy boy. Yeah, I rebalanced the entire Tarask, essentially, from scratch. Um, I went through the lore of all Tarasks that have existed in D&D &D and um, incorporated all their abilities uh, where they would fit. And uh, it is now... In my opinion, a proper level 30, oh, CR 30 challenge. So, and, you know, no more bullshit cheese with a clay golem or anything like that. Like, it's it's a challenge now. And, yeah, I think that's our last question for today. Wait. Because, oh my god, I'm hungry and we've got to get some dinner. Oh, yeah, you're right. And we have no food. <laughs> Oh yeah, living the art life. The art, <laughs> living the art yeah. life. Got a successful Kickstarter running. Can't afford food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no food for us. <laughs> what do you think we're gonna see any of that money? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Time to order pizza. Yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe get some burgers or something. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so now God. you last look at the picture. Ta da. I think yeah, I'm pretty good about it. I you still want to rework the gold, but hang on, I'm, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna post a poll so people can see what dinner we, they can just choose our dinner. What? Um, no. <laughs> and we'll do. And it's totally biased to what I want. <laughs> yeah, because you... I'm like lactose intolerant and, uh, like wheat resistant. <laughs> There we go. Put up a and sugar resistant. What the? F Everything is just a minefield for me. <laughs> just die. <laughs> I might as well just die. Just die. <laughs> I'll just die. <laughs> oh, the poll's running hot. Ooh, it's pizza and Japanese in the lead. Ooh. People got good taste. You just put down your choices. Yeah, that's what I said. This is completely my choices. <laughs> I know, but I'm like, they have good taste. It's like, you just put your own taste on it. <laughs> uh, all right. Looks like it's going to be Japanese tonight, honey. Okay. That's that's pretty good. We can I'm do good. that. I'm cool with that. Yeah, it's going to bento box. Yeah, exactly. Hell yeah. Uh, anyways, you guys are awesome. 
There was so much love in the chat. I can't like begin to explain um, how, how grateful we are, not just for you guys being in the chat and, you know, uh, sharing your love and seeing all your nice comments, but also, I mean, so giving us money, you know, like supporting the Kickstarter. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> thank you. Like, thank you. For thank you. Money. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. That's very nice. I didn't expect that. I was just like, no. oh, I'll just let's get a book out. And then it was just like, uh, -uh. <laughs> you get more than a book. You get more than a book. <laughs> but like, you know, every dollar we get is going to be put towards creating more stuff. Hell so, yeah. You know, the bigger the Kickstarter grows, the more we can make and the better we can make it, you know. Yeah. So you guys are awesome. And there was yes. so many people, and I'm sorry we couldn't get to all your questions, but we're probably gonna do another one of these. So like, check out, um, like, check on the community tab, and check on Twitter for when we announce the next uh, Q and A. And I'll try to reveal some more information next time too. Maybe we'll do another class or another race, and we'll talk about a bit of lore. Yep, pretty much. So until then, yeah. you guys all have a good night. Yeah. Or morning, wherever Love you live, if you're in Australia, I guess. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Right. Bye.